And that coverage begins tonight at 6 p.m. And that's brought to you by Old South Properties and Farm Bureau Health Plans. You'll have NC State and Marquette. And then you'll have Gonzaga, Purdue, as well as Duke Houston. But pregame for Creighton and Tennessee begins at 8.30 this evening. The NFL just announced the offseason schedule. Your Titans voluntary workouts begin on April 8th. And then their first voluntary minicamp will be April 22nd with the first OTA being May 20th. The mandatory minicamp where we find out and see who all is going to officially report will be June 4th. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs that you need to visit USSTN.com Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols the flagship station for you Tennessee Titans as well as home to 3HL This is 104.5 The Zone Yo, what up, Nashville 3? HL is on the air Friday edition. With you until 6 o'clock. Brent Doherty with you on a beautiful day in the Music City. Happy Good Friday. Hope you had the day off. Um, Oddly enough, traffic is awful coming in here. Uh, it took me uh, two hours and 45 minutes to get here today. Okay, well, let people know. It's not like you're coming from <laughs> oh, Green no, Hills. I just came from Franklin. That was just to get here from Franklin. Uh, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, 245. That is not true. No, I, I'm driving from Huntsville. It's normally an hour and 25-minute drive. Today, it was two hours and 45 minutes. So why is that? Usually on a holiday, the roads are a lot more clear. But today, not so much. And it wasn't a wreck. Like, and We're talking about 65 north, south of the city coming in. Now, the moment that you cross into uh, past like 440, that's where it starts to slow down. So it's just bad traffic going left and right. Uh, but for me, I actually did have to drive through two accidents. Two accidents because the first accident okay. got me onto a back road, and then there was an accident <laughs> on the back road. Babs was sitting in traffic. She just walked in. She's wearing a T-shirt that reads, <laughs> it's in blue. It's in Kentucky blue, it looks like. No, that's Duke blue. <laughs> in white letters, it reads, I still hate Leitner. No, I still love oh, Leitner. Yeah. Love Leitner, yes. I missed the whole point of that. I still love Leitner is what you said. I still Did you, love so, Speaking Leitner. of, well, welcome in, Batsy. How are you? Hi, thanks. Oh, this is so appropriate today. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Uh-oh. Boy, she was. I'm here. Hi. I, I tend to leave a little. And I still love Leitner. You still do, do love Leitner. Um, I I remember where I was. I was hanging out with my friend Marcy Hines at the time, and uh, we were watching the game. It's so it's so fun. Like that's one of those sports moments. I didn't have a dog in the hunt. One of those sports moments. You just remember where you were. Do you know, Huck, where you were? I was at a funeral. Oh, jeez. I'm not. I'm not even joking. I was sitting inside, like the funeral parlor's main office and we were watching it on a little bitty tiny television. I was going to say because it happened like late afternoon evening. Yeah. yeah I was at a funeral. <laughs> Pretty sure me and The Undertaker were the only two watching you that. You and The Undertaker. That was, I don't <laughs> know what the guy is. He's from Kentucky The yeah. Undertaker. He is and he is and, and, or the embalmer whoever it was whatever that guy is. He, me and I'm him. pretty sure you're not hanging out with the embalmer at a funeral. That's not probably happening. Uh, the embalmer in New Hope is also the undertaker, which is also the preacher, oh. which is also <laughs> okay. the mayor. Okay. Also owns the restaurant there. Yeah, the, yeah. And, and probably the cemetery where it got buried in, like everything. <laughs> we literally d just did Ryan's phone call. Yeah, we did. By the way, um, we should play it. Do you have that? What? No. Yes. This is going to be a crazy Friday. I'm going to just go ahead no. and tell you. Do you have it? Because I want to tell a story about I it. I will in about 30 seconds. Well, I'll tell the story first. So Ryan called in and basically just nailed what our show is mm -hmm. and gave examples as to like a, a I don't know, a hypothetical segment. Um, th This thing got run up the chain and like, <laughs> like people with the high, high levels heard it. <laughs> of cumulus thought this was a great phone call. I mean, a great phone call. <laughs> This is, if, if you missed it, this is what Ryan called in and said a few days ago. <laughs> Ryan and Franklin. Ryan, what's up? Hey, guys. How are you? Good. Good. How are you? 
Hey, I listen to you guys every afternoon, and I really enjoy it. I've never called in. Let me tell you what I hear, and I may not be the only one. Before a break, for example, you uh, mayor will come on and say, hey, Hunk has gotten us access to a time portal, and when we get back from the break, we're going to have a one-on-one interview with General Neyland and Bear Bryant. <laughs> and so then you go, you go through four or five commercials, and we come back, and everybody's excited about it. And so Mayor says, hey, Hunk, where are we on that? And Hunk <laughs> says, well, we're, in a, we're having a bit of a pickle. <laughs> And so Slade jumps in and says, Pickles, did you see, get that, see that platter of pickles I got at Twin Peaks last week? And then Babs jumps in and goes, so when I was expecting baby Babs, I couldn't, stand the, I couldn't stand the smell or the sight of a pickle. So then the mayor comes in to try to get control, and he says, hey, uh, huh, do we have Reese and Laura on line two? Let's go to them. So then Reese, Reese comes on, and he says, Hey guys, we're calling from the trunk of our 1976 Buick Cutlass, and awesome you truth. you haven't lived until you tasted Miss Laura's pickle homemade pickle wine, and and so at the start of all of this, I'm a little frustrated because I foolishly thought we were going to you know talk to General Nealon and Bear Bryant. By the end of this, I don't care anymore. I'm just I'm completely enthralled with what is that recipe in the back back of that cutlass. <laughs> so, guys, n- never, never change. Uh, so the head What's of... the recipe in the back of the cutlass? <laughs> it ended up in the email uh, inbox of the head of sports uh, um, uh, programming for Cumulus, and uh, oh, he was like, man, that totally encapsulates you guys. <laughs> and I- I'm going to go ahead and tell you, like, we kind of joke about it, like, that we break all of the rules of radio. We really do. But it's because, like, y'all connect with us and we connect with y'all and we're all one big happy family that it just it just works we think so um just wanted to share that with you and uh, tell y'all that we appreciate you uh each and every day um y'all make us laugh yeah listening and participating and kind of getting us you know what i mean because um man life is hard and so like (laughs) just want to have a little fun from for three hours a day. So hopefully right. you, you get that. 615-737-1045. Uh, the Evan and Bank chat is open. You can watch the show live on YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. Twitch, please. Slay is not here. He is blazing a trail up the Midwest. I'm sure he's in Detroit by now based on what time he left. Um, and we're going to check in with him. I just got a text message that says, let me get downtown. And then I'll be able to call in later. Word up. So there you go. All right. Um. Let's see. Uh, Cousin Roger Babs, your shirt owns. Love it. Yes. We got some Duke fans in here. Well, Duke fans are everywhere. Damn right. Such a bandwagon team. No, it is not. (laughs) Get out of here. Every team is a bandwagon team. Okay. Well, I'm glad you had two teams in the tournament. Just like Hunk. (laughs) Only one of mine's doing really well right now. See, and I joke, but I have like three baseball teams, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, You're the so. worst in baseball. I am in baseball. You got the Astros, That's the Cubs. That's my real team. Right, I love the you Cubs. Grew up. The Cubs and what, Braves? No, I went Red Sox in the Red, Red Sox, Sox Shankies That's thing. Right. And I went Carolina in the Carolina Duke thing. Yeah, that was a poor decision. Um, that game, How I'm about intrigued. Carolina going bye-bye? I had Alabama. I went 4-0 last night. I had Alabama too, but my bracket's such a debacle because Auburn screwed me. That was such a great game, man. <laughs> but look, the first two rounds are great for watching upsets and things like that. But man, when you get to the Sweet Sixteen, it's so intense. That Bama Carolina game was so intense. Mm-hmm. And what about Slay's call on Illinois too? Yeah, I mean they basically led from the beginning of the game till the end. It got it got tied at one point in the second second half. But uh, Illinois, I mean Illinois did it. I mean that was impressive. Um, it all was. It was all fun. I mean, UConn murdered San Diego State. They are just rolling. UConn's won their three tournament games by 30, 17, and 39. Well, let's be honest. Auburn helped them out. Like, they didn't have to face Auburn. <laughs> you think break. Auburn would have had them? Yeah, if they just could have passed Yale. So, can't beat Yale, but could beat UConn is where you are. 
Yes. <laughs> oh, man, what a Badger. pregnant pause on that. No, that was a... She's pissed. That's a pissed off pause. That's a pissed off pause. Yes, I do a believe P-O-P. that. Uh, not having Chad Baker, Mazzara, just... It, it, meh. It, it would have been a different game against UConn. They, they screwed around and found out. And Bob on YouTube, Detroit is in trouble. Yes. Talk about Slay coming. Uh, Jim Friganan says, you guys are the best. Love y'all. Um, Distinguished Gentleman says, go Duke. That's a fascinating matchup, too, Duke and Houston. Yeah, it's going to be a fun If y'all haven't seen Houston play, they're tough, dude. They got three guards that are three of the toughest players in college basketball. They get their shots up. They're so unselfish with each other. They play really good defense, um, but they just hit big shot after big shot. That game against Texas A&M, they all fouled out, but (laughs) still found a way to win in overtime. Uh, Pinwheel 2017, which is Reese on YouTube, says, we just got mentioned to a cutlass with a bunch of cat emojis. <laughs> they have 12 feral cats, Reese and Laura, if y'all didn't know. Um, Cousin Roger says, I get, I just love Leitner. He gave zero. He he went on with somebody today. I was going to say, he still gives zero. He went on with somebody today and said they should do away with NIL. Eradicate it. He would have been a millionaire with NIL. <laughs> the tweet that I saw said that his net worth is like $17 million. <laughs> and for him to have that take is pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Um, lethal Latin underscore 615. Will Tennessee be on tonight with the shots? Meaning, will they shoot it better than they did against Texas? Well, they better or they're going to be done. That's that's all you need to say about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is, a, that is a quick indicator early in this game of how it's going to go. Yeah. I mean, you would think that there's no possible way that a team can shoot less than 25% in three out of their last four games. And it's crazy. But who against, knows? Against Texas, what was the stat? It was no team. There there have been 66 cases of an NCAA tournament team in a game shooting less than 15% from three and less than 35% from the floor. Oh, None six, of them have won. Oh, in 66, Tennessee, the first team to win mm-hmm. with those kinds of numbers. Um, that's leading me to the first question today. Confidence level in Tennessee. Tennessee and Creighton tonight, you don't have to be a Tennessee fan to answer this by any stretch of the imagination. No, because it's going to be a fun game. <laughs> it's, it's a great matchup. Yeah. Um, but confidence level in Tennessee, where are you? One to ten. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Red Doherty, Don Davenport, producer of Three HLs, Joe Hunt. What's up? We'll be right back. What up, people? Kellum Stem Cell Institute.com is who you should reach out to. Get your consultation set up today at 615-850-4415. Now, when it comes to Kellum Stem Cell Institute.com and understanding exactly what they do, well, it's your body working for you, and it's your cells that you're, um, that's the most important part because it's your solution. Now, you ask, Am I going in to be the guinea pig for this? No, uh, uh-uh, not at all. This works because I did it. I'm your guinea pig, people. I already went in and got it done, and so did other people as well. And they have their own testimonies. You could have yours. Mine was, you know, playing after all these years of knee problems with inflammation. I mean, flaring up just to walk around. I would, you know, if I knew I was going to be active and walking for a long day, I would pop to a leaf just to make sure that the inflammation doesn't flare up. Not having to do that anymore. Plane rides, none of that is a problem. Sleeping on my right side with my shoulder, none of that is a problem anymore. You go in and talk to Dr. Kellum during your consultation and get any questions answered. All you got to do is hit him up, 615-850-4415, KellumStemCellInstitute.com. Spring is coming, and you know what to do. You need to call my guys at Dickens Turf and Landscape Supply. DickensSupply.com is the website. You can go ahead and get there. And you can listen to Trey Hartzog right now from Dickens Turf and Landscape Supply with more. Trey, what up? Hey, Brent. That's right, Dickens Turf and Landscape. 
case fly. Maybe you're somebody who doesn't know anything about grass at all, but you're like, hey, man, my neighbor, he has a really nice lawn, and I want my lawn to look that way. And Dick has heard from Landscape Fly, we can do just that for you. And you get to be cool because you get to come on and you get to do the work yourself, which if you're a manly man, like I know Brent Doherty is, then you get to actually go out, do the work, sweat a little bit, and then, hey, have the best lawn in the neighborhood. It's at Dick has heard from Landscape Supply. We have a 12 step turf process that if you follow that, put something out on the lawn once a month, we can promise you a great lush lawn. I'll tell you also what I love about Spring Brent, the Toro sales event. A lot of great deals. Doesn't matter if you have 0.3 of an acre, 33 acres. We have a beautiful red Toro machine just for you. Stop in and see us. We'd love to talk to you about it. Dickens Turf and Landscape Supply can be located all over Middle Tennessee. The locations in Nashville, Hendersonville, Murfreesboro, Bellevue, Brentwood Lawnmower, Mount Juliet. If you can't get a hold of us, check us out online, dickensupply.com.
Three Town 1045, the zone print already Don Davenport. Friday edition. Hope you're having a great day. It's gonna be a fun weekend. Be fun watching some great basketball activity. I came across this uh Twitter follow at Dad Jokes. At Dad says jokes is what the uh, Twitter <laughs> follow is. <laughs> Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Went from being a fun little kid song to a list of things that hurt. <laughs> is a dad joke. I mean Will Bowling should write for this this guy. <laughs> Will Bowling has the best dad jokes, and he's not one, <laughs> which is also funny. Which is funny, yeah. 615-737-1045. Uh, by the way, coming up on Monday, April Fool's Day. Ooh, that's right. I read today that Krispy Kreme is going to sell a dozen donuts on April Fool's Day for $4.01. 401 And that got me thinking, I don't. I mean, I haven't how much bought, are they really normally? I, I haven't bought a dozen donuts in a while from Chris. Like, I, I four hundred one sounds about right, right? Okay, Dad. <laughs> All right, old man. Probably like twelve hundred one now. There's how this much thing are called donuts? inflation. How much are a dozen donuts at Krispy Kreme? Uh, what would you guess? I would say like ten. Ten bucks. Yeah. I'm probably low too. What do you? What is it, Hunk? I am uh, currently creating a delivery right now, so I will let you guys know in just a second. <laughs> yeah, but what would you think though before oh, I, you find out? I think out? it's like twelve oh one. Like seriously, like I think it's it's at least a dollar a donut. A dollar a donut. Okay, that makes sense. Mm, yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know, but so I that do... deal's going on. Yeah, four oh one on four oh one. Where That's is what... that? Krispy Kreme. No free plugs, although there's one. By the way, Tennessee and Creighton tonight. They should bring us a dozen donuts on Monday. You think so? Maybe. Or No, I don't need donuts. Yeah, we really don't. Uh, it's actually $14.99 without oh. tax. 15 bucks. So four oh one. that's a big savings. Dang. <laughs> Boy, I just had no idea how much I would be saving. Wow. It's 14 It's 15 it is, bucks a dozen? Dollar twenty five a donut. Candy B ninety one on YouTube said fourteen to sixteen dollars. She was right on it. Hmm. Blue for meditation about twelve dollars a dozen. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Trey in Nashville talking about Alabama winning last night. Trey, what up? Wow, how y'all doing today, guys? Hey, we're good. good. Trey, how what are up, you? man? Good, good, good. Hey, man, I think that was about the most impressive win I've seen. In a long time, you know, uh, I only watched maybe two, three ball games this year, and that one last night really resonated with me. Yeah, because because I was in the overnight express business, so I had a delivery to Nissan. It was early, early, early in the morning, and that tornado hit down there and hit that college yeah. in uh, Alabama. Yeah, wow, yeah. oh, man. And, I seen that spirit in them boys last night, and I tell you, man, hey, <laughs> them boys coming to play. I love Tennessee now, but them Alabama boys, they showed, showed some resilience last That's night. That's the word. I just wanted to give them a shout-out. I want to give y'all a shout-out, and y'all take care, too. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Trey. Thank you, Trey. That's the word. I feel like word. that team has shown that all year. Resiliency like they, last they night, though, had some moments. North Carolina would c- hit big shots to like cut, cut it, and I mean, it looked like they would take take over, and Alabama would just hit shot after shot after shot. What's interesting is Alabama scored eighty nine points, which is, I mean, they averaged ninety one, which is number one in the country. Yeah, uh, but they scored eighty nine points. Their bench had seven. I mean, that's incredible. That's so, crazy. Mark Sears. Um, if you haven't seen him play, please watch against Clemson. How crazy is that, number one, now that I get there? Clemson's any, win, too. Any, anybody have Alabama or Clemson in the Final Four? Negative. I do have Alabama. I love that you had to look. I did. Well, because <laughs> I, I quit remembering after Auburn screwed us. Uh, I, do, I do have Alabama in the Elite Eight. Yeah. But I, just, I had Arizona I'll bet there in were, my Final Four. Like, how many brackets out of the 15 million had Alabama and Clemson in the early date? Probably not a Like, lot. winner goes to the Final Four, Alabama and Clemson. Um, what's interesting about the starting line, so Mark Sears, I want to go back to him. Remember yesterday I told you he can get to the rim anytime he wants? In the <laughs> first half, that dude was on fire. And then he started distributing the basketball in the second half. And so 
they attacked in a different way, and, it, and it's almost like they had two different game plans. But Mark Sears played 40 minutes, all 40 minutes wow. last night, and he had 18 points. Um, Does that come back to get them with quick turnaround? Maybe. I don't know. That's a great question. I mean, I, mentally, like, no, I you don't. You don't think like that because it's it's do or die. It's win or right. go home for good. I mean, this is this is what you play all season for. So mentally, no, but like the physically part of it that sometimes you might not be able to fight. I wonder if it gets them. So Estrada played 35 minutes. He mm-hmm. had 19 points, four rebounds, three assists. Grant Nelson was incredible. And uh, he transferred in from, where did he transfer in from? Uh, North Dakota State, maybe? Is that where he, he's from? Uh, anyway, uh, he played 36 minutes, 24 points, and 12 boards. And that guy down the stretch was unstoppable. Like, they found a matchup there and exploited the hell out of it. Congrats to Alabama on just a, an incredible performance. And North Carolina played well and kept coming at him. But but Alabama, again, resiliency is, is the word. 615-737-1045. Confidence level in Tennessee tonight. In their matchup with Creighton, you don't have to be a Tennessee fan to answer this. Just kind of want to take a, a kind of a temperature on where people are with this Tennessee Creighton matchup. 615 737 1045, you want in. I will tell you this 52% of the public is on Creighton plus the three tonight. Mm. It's interesting. This line had been two and a half all week, and then it popped up to three yesterday. It's up to three and a half now. So money going in on Tennessee. Are you that confident? <sighs> In no. the Vols? No. Do you think they win? Yes. You think they win? I think that's where most people are. Mm-hmm. I think I think most people think this is this is a decent matchup for Tennessee. I think they'll win, but I have no confidence in them because what if they shoot 25% again? Exactly. Because, honestly, I thought after the SEC tournament, there's no way in heck that they could play that bad again. There's no way. With that roster, with Barnes, with... That happening in the SEC tournament, the early exit, all of that. I'm like, there's there's just no way that they're going to play that bad again. And then they came out, obviously, and didn't have issues in the first round. But then did play poorly or at least shoot poorly again. So part of me is like, there's no way that they can shoot that, continue to shoot that poorly, right? There's no way. Yeah. But then the other part of me is like, well, shoot, that's what I thought after the SEC tournament, and it happened again. You know what's interesting is that um, I think when they went to conference tournament, they everybody switched to the Wilson ball, mm-hmm. and Tennessee hasn't shot well with it. <laughs> Wait, I, so I maybe don't know about... maybe, I, I don't either. I just I, I, maybe that I mean, is so a thing. I mean, so it only affects them and nobody else. It definitely, um, that, well, I mean, to your point, though, they, I mean, Mississippi State game and the uh, Texas game are definite things that happened. Yeah. Um, well, and, and, you know, Slay always talks about tournament time matchups, right? Like, how do they match up against certain teams? Like, obviously, Creighton will be a, a defensive challenge. Yeah. I mean, that's basketball. It's matchups. It's like Kentucky couldn't beat Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. Tennessee couldn't beat Mississippi State. Mississippi State is the only SEC team that beat Tennessee twice. Or that didn't lose to Tennessee. That's the stat. The only SEC team that didn't lose to Tennessee. And then Texas A&M beat Kentucky twice, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, You can watch the show YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. Twitch, please. The Evan and Bake chat is open. Cousin Roger, didn't Clemson have like four or five losses, four out of five losses heading into the tournament? They lost three out of four. Um down the stretch, and then now they have won th- all three of their tournament games, yes. three They lost three out of four going in. Um, another storyline to consider tonight um, along those lines, North Carolina State. NC State, an 11 seed against 2 seed Marquette. Marquette, a six-and-a-half point favorite. That is the first game to tip tonight at 6.09 p.m. on CBS. Like, NC- there's no way that can continue, right? So NC State's won seven in a row. Before that seven-game win streak that got them into the tournament and now into the Sweet 16, they had lost four in a row and two out of nine. They had won two out of nine. Yeah. They were two and seven in their previous nine games, had lost four in a row, and then... Like the coaching staff was about to be fired. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love sports. 615-737-1045. The the overall consensus, it seems like in our chat, is is actually pretty high on a confidence meter 
for the Vols. I mean, we're I'm seeing I would it would be a nine, but just because it's Tennessee, it's a seven, which I still think is pretty high as far as confident that they're going to be able to come away on top on this one. But there's a lot of eights, some nines sprinkled in. Um, it's pretty impressive. Drum <laughs> underscore in underscore run is dead on it. If this game is ugly, Vols win. Creighton needs to win pretty. Vols can win pretty or ugly. Vols need to drag this game into the mud. I think that is um, honestly. Press them, pressure. Don't give them space. So Creighton is number six in the country at made three-pointers per game, 10.7. Mm-hmm. They make almost 11 threes per game. And what I've read about them is if you can get a hand in their face, they're – their percentage comes way down. Well, what does Tennessee do? Tennessee is the, what, third best defensive team field goal percentage-wise in the country. Um, so Tennessee's going to get they're, – they're, Creighton shouldn't have open – if Creighton gets open looks, then something's trouble. wrong with Tennessee. In trouble, yes. Um, so they're number six in the country in threes. They get most of their points behind the arc. They're like 276. What was that stat I said the other day? Um, in two-point baskets. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't make a lot of free throws because they don't get fouled very much because they're shooting jump shots. Um, defensively, they're really good around the basket. They've got the three-time defensive player of the year um, down low, but they will give you mid-range jumpers. So that makes me wonder, you know that little curl play they run with Connect where he gets to the elbow and then rises up and shoots it, that little 15-footer? I wonder if they try to get him going with that. Um, and they he's, don't. He's due a game. He's due a game, and they don't defend the three that well. So... Again, Tennessee, it's not like Texas was in their face. They had open looks and missed them. So uh, that might not matter from a uh, Creighton perspective. 615-737-1045. What is your confidence level in Tennessee tonight against Creighton? Laura and Reese. Oh, boy. What are you guys doing? (laughs) Well, we're sitting in the car after a nap so we can watch this game tonight. I'm a nervous wreck. My confidence level is about a five. Wait, real quick. I'll get back to your confidence level. Y'all took a nap in the car? No, in the house. Then we came to the car to listen to the show. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I got to make my pickle wine. Uh, Babs, are, Babs right. are you with me? Yes. Babs, are you with me? I'm here. So, I don't know about the other caller, but you know what me and you have in common? We don't have a lot in common, but you know what we have in common? I can't what? wait to hear this. <laughs> we both hate Alabama. There we go. There we go. I All like right. it. Now, I'm going to hit y'all with some actual serious stuff. It's going to be weird for me. But so, number one, Creighton plays a seven man rotation. Yep. What we got to do here is get uh, right off the bat, we get Ziegler in penetration to the lane. We kick it for threes if they don't foul us because we got to find a way to get them in foul trouble. Number two, uh, the Abdu, Adu feller. He he's good at mid range jumpers, which they give us. We got to get him the ball. If, if he can't get down low against that guy and get a foul, mid range jumper. Another way to get Creighton in foul trouble is we need Dalton Connect to slash instead of shooting all three. We do all that, we get the seven man rotation in foul trouble. We win by nine or twelve points. What like do you think it. on that, man? Uh, they typically don't get in foul trouble, but I'm with you on that. Um, what, what I've read about them, um, is that they move their feet really well on defense like Tennessee and, and they defend well like that. But yeah, I mean, you get them in foul trouble there in trial, especially that guy down low. And then Call- sorry, Brandon. I'm out of breath. I had to chase the neighbor's dog home. It came over trying to eat the cat stray cat food. I'm a little out of breath. I had to take Topper home three streets over. It's been, Topper? Been an ordeal Wait, he's, is a yeah. Western Kentucky fan, this, this guy? No, nah, no, Copper. I don't know why oh, they Copper. Copper. Yeah, it's a big – yeah, we'll call him Copper from now on. There we go. <laughs> uh, how about us being up by seven and a half? But anyhow, moving on. Um, it, Creighton hits ten and a half threes. So let's give them 11 threes. That's only 33 points. And we're, they're not going to hit 11 threes against us. We got we to gotta survive their first punch of their, their three-point, you know, fury. And we survive that, and we get some early fouls, and they're going to be rattled. Now, we need Big Slay to call in he and is. ramble on about this because I want to know his analysis on this. But I like the matchup. And, again, I got him at two and a half. We went 300 instead of 200. Slay kind of blew me into extra confidence there. So I'll thank him when we win. <laughs> <laughs> but – uh I like it. I think we can get to their seven-man rotation. We have a deep rotation. 
I feel as long as we can shoot like 38%, if we can just get near the 40% mark instead of 20-something, I like it. I see them in early foul trouble, and then I think they're so conscious of fouls, I think they'll back off, and then that's when we can get to the bucket even more. Even if we don't get the fouls, we'll get the buckets instead of the fouls, which is fine. But all right, Bab, you got to take it on out with us. Join in, Laura. <laughs> Good oh, Rocky Top. Top. Wouldn't throw War Eagle in there. Go, Auburn. There you Rocky go. Rocky Top, Tennessee. <laughs> we love hey. you. Go, Big Orange. Woo! There's Reason Laura right there. Reason Laura. They took a nap, so they're ready. Oh, they're they said ready. they were going to do that. They said they were going to take a nap because the game was was late tonight. You have to nine oh nine tip. I love it. I there love late nights. Also known hey. as passing out. <laughs> it's also known as uh, curing the hangover. Um, <laughs> he did mention Zakai. Yeah, he has to play well. Has to play well. Stirs the drink. I like how that's, you say that. What, you always what, say that. Zakai stirs the drink. Zakai stirs the drink. He does. He definitely does. Like you know, they've won when Connect hasn't been hitting. Yes. Um, but usually that's because Zakai is Zakai. And if Zakai is not Zakai, even if Connect is hitting, it affects Tennessee. So he's the, he's the guy that makes it go. Yeah, the line is three and a half now. Um, I had it at two and a half as, as well. But uh, Which shows a lot of money coming in on Tennessee. Yes. So they're trying to. Vegas start trying to curb it a little bit. Mm-hmm. So that's where that is. Point spreads uh, tonight. Um, let's see. NC State and Marquette. Marquette by seven. Gonzaga, a five-point underdog to Purdue. I, I can't wait to watch that game. You it's know me be a and Purdue. One. I can't stand them, but I can't turn away from them. Like that big dude with that big head, I just can't stop. And I want them to lose every time they walk on the floor. Sorry, Purdue fans. I just get bored watching them, but do I do it. Have I have a lot of Purdue I, fans here. I, I don't know. I think we have fans of everyone here. Um, <laughs> but I can't turn away. I kind of think the Zags are the uh, the like quiet assassins in this I took tournament. them in this but I think it's because I don't like Purdue right so you shouldn't do that but <laughs> I don't want to watch the game have money on Purdue root, wanting to root against them you know what I mean right so usually in those situations I don't throw down 20 bucks but I did so there you go uh Duke and Duke. Houston I yeah. haven't done anything with this one Houston by four Oof. here's the thing if Duke played how they did the last game as Slay says didn't uh, play with their food before they ate it. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. Um, if Duke plays like that, I, they they can win the whole dang dang thing. I think you could say. But what that are about the chances of, the, of you know them I mean? playing like that again? I like mean, the range that, of, that was the best they've played all year. The range of play for all of these teams is so great. Like you literally could say that about everybody, right? Like they have, they, they all have clunkers. You know what I mean? UConn seems to be the hottest in terms of just blowing everyone out, but but their road was also easier. easier. Uh, Creighton and Tennessee, Tennessee by three and a half. Um, they've already got point spreads for the Elite Eight for Saturday's games: Illinois and UConn. UConn by eight and a half. Clemson and Alabama. Bama by two and a half to get to the Final Four. Favored to get to the Final Four. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Your confidence level in Tennessee against Creighton tonight. Uh, in the 4 o'clock hour, we've got a Titans question for you. That's coming up next. 3 HL 104.5 The Zone. I want to tell you about Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville. I am a customer of Pella Windows and Doors and would love to recommend them to you. Locally owned and operated, family oriented, family first. Uh, And Pella was founded back in 1925. So they're going to be 100 years old next year. Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville, of course, lifetime warranties on all of their windows, but also Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville backs up their work with a 10-year labor warranty, which is leading in the industry. And if you're like me, maybe you go and search online, see what people say about different companies before you consider hiring them. I always do that. Um, And 
their Google reviews are phenomenal. 4.9 with a ton of Google reviews. So you know people who have ended up using Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville love them. Their process of installation is what allows them to warranty that work. Uh, they are there for sales, installation, service after installation. The staff is in place always to help you, the customer. And I know it because uh, I just went to their showroom and it was packed with staff members there to help you. Schedule your free consultation. Check out a limited time special. They have 50% off qualifying installations and no money down, no interest, no payments for 12 months. You can do that. Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville at PellaNashville.com. Go up to Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. That's where you need to go to get that next new vehicle. Maybe you can get it done this weekend. Now is the time. Maybe you've been thinking about it for a while. And you can uh, you can make it happen this weekend, Captain. Um, go see my friend uh, Daniel Gupton and his crew. Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. No pressure on you at all from them. They simply want you in the vehicle that's right for you. So whatever your, your reason is for needing something new, whether you want less of a car payment, maybe you want more of a car payment, I don't know. Uh, something less ga- uh, gas, of, more gas efficient, not less gas efficient. Maybe you want that too, I don't know. Whatever your needs are, go share that with them and they'll be able to help you out. Take your test drive, you go inside, they will help make the numbers work and it will be that easy. Gupton Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, 3450 Tom Austin Highway in beautiful Springfield, Tennessee, just 30 minutes from downtown Nashville. You can check them out online, guptonmotors.com. All of the website uh, information is there the dealership information uh the inventory all of it guptonmotors.com 24 west or clarksville exit 35 straight shot into the best vehicle buying experience you've ever had 3450 tom austin highway 30 minutes from downtown nashville gupton dodge car search jeep ram
Three HL one zero four five. The zone. Brent Doherty, Don Davenport, with you. Ron Slay is in Detroit. He's going to check in. Slay and uh, Will from the Ville. What kind of uh, man that would be fun? I'm telling you, man. Tournament basketball is so much fun. We had the chance to go to a Final Four one time in in Atlanta. So much fun. Super Bowl's weird in that, like, it doesn't feel like a football game, honestly. Like, I, I mean, obviously you're watching a football game, but there's so much more going on that's kind of distracting. College football national championship. I saw Tennessee beat Florida State um, following the 98 season. The weirdest part about that was just sitting there in disbelief as Tennessee was sitting on the football to win a national title. That was like... I, I couldn't comprehend it. Like, it, it was really difficult to process what that moment was. Because <laughs> you just never anticipated it as a Tennessee fan. That's probably where Tennessee basketball guy is right now. Like, if Tennessee is, like, sitting, dribbling out the clock to win a national title, that's going to be a weird thing for Tennessee fan to process. Way more so than football. But, um, yeah, it's interesting. World Series is incredible. World Series is the best. You stand the entire time. Um, everybody says, like, you know, if people complain about baseball a lot of time, it's because it's too slow. But to me, that's part of the beauty of the game, honestly, is because you have time in between pitches to think about all of the possible scenarios, like every pitch that's made during the course of the game. And when it's the World Series, it's ramped up, obviously. And so um, that's a, that's an incredible one, too. I'm sorry. I was just sitting here thinking about like what's the yeah, what the best the best championship like environment to go watch live. Oh, they're all good. World Series is incredible. Have it's, not been to one of those. It's so intense, especially if you're watching your team. Um, but like if you went to a Braves World Series and just st- like nobody sits down, you just stand the whole time. And every pitch that's made, the the 20 seconds or whatever, you're thinking about, okay, if he hits into a double play or if he hits a sack fly or, like, you're thinking about all of the things and then, boom, there's the pitch. And then you reset it. Like, you don't take a mental break during d- during the game at all. Zero. Which is way different from a like normal in, baseball game. <laughs> right. But, it, like, in basketball, for example, you've got the under-16 timeout, the under-12 timeout, where you can kind of take a breath and reset where you are. But baseball, like, it's funny that the the complaint is that it's too slow, but actually, if you think about it, like, if, if it's ramped up, like, World Series level, like, you don't have a any moments to pause and take a breath. Whereas in football, there are timeouts, there's halftime, you know, basketball, I just mentioned, 615-737-1045. Question we were asking, um, confidence level in Tennessee tonight against Creighton. The point spread has gone from two and a half, Vols by two and a half, to Vols by three and a half now which is interesting. Uh, Don Davenport celebrating basketball today with her. I love Christian. What does it say? I still love Christian Leitner. I still love Leitner. Yeah. T-shirt. But Sean said he turned on. For you Kentucky fans. He turned on YouTube and that was the first thing he saw. (laughs) Harold said Duke sucks. I mean, (laughs) listen, Duke's one of those teams. You hate them or love them. There's no no in between. Uh -uh. 615-737-1045. Antonio in Nashville. Antonio, what's up? Hey, what's going on, y'all? Hey, what's happening? What's happening? Yo, what up? How are you? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. Y'all good? Yeah. Yes, Hell indeed. Yeah. Yes, indeed. I want to let I want to let y'all know, man. Uh, we 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 we. I'm a Duke fan. Yes. 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 I want okay, to so let you know. Me... You're not alone. You're not alone. We are, we are sprinkled. Hey, <laughs> there before, are some out here. Before we go further, what is your yeah, confidence we... level in Duke tonight against Houston? Hey. <laughs> That's Houston's how I tough, feel. aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, Houston is like two different teams, man. I mean, they could play tough and they could play loose. I mean, they could play both ways. Yeah. They could play. They could play. They could play uh, pretty and they could play ugly. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was going to tell you, um, do y'all remember the uh, the 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 bad, bad, god awful great team uh, UNLV back oh, in the yeah. day, uh, nineteen ninety, I think it was ninety and ninety one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, now they beat Duke by like 30, I think. 30 in the final four. 
Yes. And then the next year, Duke got them. Yep. yep. Repaid them in the championship game. That's why I'm a Duke Blue Devil. Oh, really? So okay. it was like an anti-UNLV thing. So for people that don't remember, UNLV was that team. People loved or hated. Yep. Oh, my goodness. I yeah. I enjoyed UNLV, but I liked I liked them before that group though because I'll tell you why because I as a kid I couldn't go to sleep at night and they would be they would be on UNLV would be on ESPN at night like with Freddie Banks and Gerald Patio and and guys that like that was Tarkanian right yeah yeah but the, this group yeah. was before the one that yeah. took it to another level okay um but yeah Stacy Ogman and Larry Johnson and Greg Anthony and Anderson Hunt and all those guys man they were running up and down the floor they were talking trash I mean it was crazy Yeah that's that's what I loved about them and I loved that they beat Duke by 30 and then Duke came back and got them I was like wait a minute if Duke can beat Yono V at the top of their level Duke's a good team and so, that's why I'm a Duke Blue Devil. So you've been a Duke Blue Devil it. ever since. So that's, two, a, that's a long time of fandom, too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm longer than we want to know. <laughs> 30, 34 years? That's crazy. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm 46. So, oh, did you say that? Yep. Oh, I'm going to say something when we come back that's going to make you feel really old. Um, <laughs> I found so stay today. tuned. Yeah, you're going to want to hear that. <laughs> hey, hey uh, Antonio, enjoy the game tonight, man. Appreciate you calling Go in, Duke. Man. Hey, hey, go balls too. At yes. least. <laughs> Look at that. Dukies unite. Um, to I your like point it. about Duke, if they shoot like they did against James Madison, they were 14 of 28 from three. 14 of 28. McCain had 30. He was eight for 11. If they shoot like that, 100% that game is going down to the wire. I would love for that game to go down to the wire because mm-hmm. that, that one would be really intense. And I think uh, everybody would tune in, for sure. So confidence level in Tennessee tonight versus Creighton. For me, um, I'm at about an eight for for Tennessee. Okay, that's pretty good. I think it's a good matchup. I think Tennessee defends well. And that, um, why are you laughing at me? I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at a tweet I got. Oh. (laughs) Just randomly smiled. Sorry. It's Um, talking about the confidence in Tennessee. It's the... It's from Mo Exotic on Twitter. Confidence level in Tennessee, nine. Confidence level in Rick Barnes in the big dance, four. Okay, I understand <laughs> that one. Yeah. Shelby says 10. I give it a 10. Vols take 15 more shots. Adu goes for a double-double with 20 points. It's his time. Adu, I don't know because that's where uh, that's where Ryan Brenner lives down low, and he's the three-time defensive player of the year in the Big East. You also have the SEC Defense Player of the Year out front and the guys Ziggler. It's going to be a good good matchup. Should be anyway, and uh, a lot of fun. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Yeah, when we come back, um, want to feel old? I've got something for you. Also, question for Titans fans: If Joe Alt, one of the receivers, neighbors Harrison Jr. or Adunze, or Brock Bowers is there at seven, which way do you go? Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Oh, that was a dad joke right there. Will Bowling's the best at it. Uh, You know who is the best at helping you organize your house or giving you a show-stopping closet or creating an entire home office for you? That would be Artisan Custom Closets. You can visit them at Artisan, A-R-T-I-S-A-N, customclosets.com. Say goodbye to clutter. Hello to calm in 2024 with Artisan. And I mentioned the show-stopping closet. If you want that, they can do that. Uh, But I actually used Artisan Custom Closets for my garage because there was stuff everywhere. You couldn't even walk through it. Nothing was organized. Uh, And they came in. 
gave me 3D plans of what they were going to do. Everything has a place, the bikes, the basketballs, the uh, equipment, lawn equipment. Everything has a place, and it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And I got to pick out of those 3D plans um, what I wanted to keep, what I wanted to change, and it was all within my budget and then installed in less than a day. They were the best. Artists, it makes it easy to create calm. So bring calm to your home and get organized. Call 615 8 800-2199. That's 800-2199. Or visit artisancustomcloasets.com to book your appointment. And that coverage begins tonight at 6 o'clock here on 104.5 The Zone and is brought to you by Old South Properties and Farm Bureau Health Plans. You're going to get NC State and Marquette first. Then you're going to have a little bit of sprinkling of Gonzaga, Purdue, Duke, Houston. But at 8.30, we will go into coverage of Tennessee and Creighton. You also have some college baseball going on today. Some games are a little different than others because Vanderbilt and Missouri are going to get going tonight at 6 o'clock. That's actually game two of their three-game series with Easter. 
Vandy won last night, whereas in the Tennessee Vols in Knoxville are hosting Georgia tonight at 530. That's only game one of that particular series. The Eagles just made a trade with the New York Jets as they are trading Hassan Reddick to the Jets for for compensation for 2024, as well as a conditional 2026 third round pick. Correction on the compensation, the actual, the Eagles just announced that they are not going to take any compensation and the Jets will have to pick up the entire $14.5 million of Reddick's deal. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols, the flagship station for you, Tennessee Titans, as well as home to 3HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. Yo, what up? 3HL, 104.5 The Zone, Friday edition. Did it. Made it to the end of the week. It is a beautiful day out there. Hope you guys are having a great day. Hope you got to uh, enjoy this good Friday and maybe be off work. I know a lot of y'all are not in that position. (laughs) Yes. We are not in that position. Man, the basketball was so great last night. Uh, Looking forward to it tonight. Obviously, uh, four more games tonight. As I just ran up the stairs, can you tell? <laughs> What'd you get? Coffee? Water. But I ended up in a conversation <laughs> with uh, Hunter downstairs, and we were talking about this question that I was just gonna gonna say, "Want to feel old?" Which is, oh yeah. Do you need me to talk for a little bit so you can catch your breath? No, I'm good. Um, Want to <laughs> feel old? Okay, Jackson Chorio is the first person to hit the major leagues born in 2004. What? 2004? <laughs> I was like, Boy. I told, I told Hunter, I said uh, he he, one of our sales managers downstairs, and and uh, I said, you want to feel old? He goes, why not? Everything else makes me feel old. <laughs> I'm like, okay, and I told him that. This guy, first player to hit the majors, born in the year 2004. I was like, 3HL started in 2010. That dude was like five and a half. Oh, my gosh. Now he plays for the Brewers. 2004. So then Hunter said, um, I came to this company in 2001, he said. I was like, oh, 9-11 year. He goes, yeah, I'd been here a month. Oh, geez. And so we started talking about working in radio through 9-11, through COVID. Were you on the air there then? Uh, no, I was in sales. Okay. Um, when nine, and so um, we were riding in to work and heard about, you know, the first plane that hit the building. But at that point, you didn't really know what was going on. Mm-hmm. And you, your immediate thought, I don't know why, maybe, maybe – Maybe we're all different on this one, but I thought, oh, okay, like a little plane hit it or I, I don't know. Right. And then we got to work to the radio station and everybody was in the newsroom where all the televisions were just, I mean, there, there's no even way to describe what that feeling was. Mm. And certainly for all of you that lost loved ones or, or people that you knew and, and all of that stuff. But we, we were talking about going through radio during that time and then also COVID. And I was like, yeah, uh, I said COVID was a challenge because, you know, we end up in our, our houses on computer screens. And for me doing this job, like I have to have y'all in the room. Like I feed off of your energy. Also, you know, we have to see each other and look each other in the eyes, body language. And yeah. So anyway, so then I was like, oh, crap, I got to go. And I ran up the stairs, and here we are, out of breath. 615-737-1045. <laughs> so there you go. I'm sure you all feel old now. Uh, 2004, okay. this guy was born. Jeez. Mm. Yeah, tonight's matchup's 11 seed NC State against 2 seed Marquette. Marquette, six and a half point favorite, 609 CBS. Marquette uh, has not been to the Elite Eight since 2012 and 13. You know what's funny? That makes you feel old, too, because you, I, I think Marquette as perennial. Well, I mean, I think all of us can, a lot of us can remember the Dwayne Wade Marquette team. Mm-hmm. You got to go way back for that one. 
where they beat Kentucky and he had 30 points and 10 rebounds and 10 assists or whatever it was. Uh, and they went to the final four. Um, but yeah, you know, what's funny is Alabama and Clemson are making are to the elite eight for the second time each in franchise in franchise in school history, Tennessee trying to get there too. Tennessee's only been to one. Also, it's kind of weird that Clemson had only been to one. Alabama had only been to one. Tennessee had only been to one. Clemson and Alabama have already won. That means Tennessee's going to win, right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> so which game are you looking most forward to? Take out tennis, Take out your Tennessee alum part of it. For sure. Just from matchup standpoint, what are you looking forward to the most? I think Tennessee and Crate might be the most interesting matchup. Outside okay. of that game, I'm really not that interested in NC State and Marquette. Because you think Marquette, I, is I think gonna Marquette's going to run them. Yeah. Uh, so I took the six and a half there. Um, Gonzaga and Purdue, for the reasons I explained earlier, like I just I can't take my eyes off Purdue, and I can't stand that. I can't stand the way they play bas- basketball. Mm-hmm. I mean, literally, all they do is Edie posts up, and if he doesn't get low enough, he comes up to the free throw line, sets a pick, and rolls. That's their entire offense. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you double down off him, he'll pass it out. And they go from last year, they were like 276 in three pointers. This year, they're fourth. So because they can hit the three, that's what separates them from those first round exit, exit teams. In the past. Yeah. So the last three years, they lost to a 12 seed, a 13 seed, and a 16 seed all in the first round. This seems better than that. Um, so I'm interested to see how Gonzaga deals with Edie. Plus, that's what I'm most interested in, that matchup. That matchup? Mm-hmm. Just because I think I think Gonzaga is not getting or hasn't gotten the, the attention or the credit they deserve. So I think it's going to be interesting. I agree with that. Um, also, from a Tennessee fan perspective, like if mm-hmm. Tennessee were to win, they get the winner of that game. So I'm, I kind of want to see how that all plays out too. But right. uh, Duke and Houston, that's the one where your emotions will lie. Um I'm really interested to see. Like, if Duke can stay hot, that game has a chance to be like a 91 to 90, like, thriller. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, I, th- I think they're all good. Um, and maybe NC State hangs. You know, DJ Burns down low. You know, he's like 320 pounds, that guy. But he can move up and down the floor a little bit. And I mean, they're they're the lone Cinderella left, right? Yeah, I mean, I guess if Clemson were to get in the Final Four as a six seed, but yeah, I mean, they're double digit seed. Last one left. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Got a Titans question for you coming up. D'Angelo in Nashville. D, what's up, man? How y'all doing? Good, good. I'm doing good too. Uh, on that uh, draft, I I would pick uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. I would pick a, a elite wide receiver before I pick left tackle out. And I, hmm. I actually, I would pick, I would pick Turner before I pick out two if he's available. Yeah, Dallas Turner. Dallas Turner. I, I should include that one. Include I, that one. I, yeah, yeah, I'm glad you you brought that. Yeah, up. Yeah, good Dave. call, D'Angelo. Oh, uh, and one more on the Duke. Uh, I think it was like 1993 or 94. Uh, that's back when they had T9 and stuff. And blue is my favorite cover. And that's that's the reason why I became a Duke Blue Devil fan. I like it. I love the because I love the logo. Look at all you dookies out here, man. I like it. <laughs> all right, man. I got the logo on my earrings. Go, go today. Ball. Thank you, D. Duke in Tennessee. Like we've had two calls like that. Yeah. Duke fan, go Vols. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five at three HL one zero four five. Let's get UT sexy in here real quick. What up, sexy? Hey. Hey, how y'all doing, folks? Hey, we're good, good man. Hey, man. I, you know, I'm a basketball fan, obviously Tennessee. I can, I can swing with Duke. I'm not a huge fan, but anyway, <laughs> I want to talk about the state of Kentucky in basketball. Mayor, are you up to date on this Rodney Woods firing at Wayne County High School in Kentucky? No. Well, uh, if you go back in history, Mr. Woods was a point guard during the Ernie and Bernie show at the University of Tennessee. And he's been coaching at this high school, if I'm not mistaken, 38 years. He's won like 800 games. And his wife was on the school board a couple of years ago. And the guy that's the superintendent now was trying to get in there. And she voted the whole board, uh, not unanimously, but they voted against him being superintendent. 
Well, supposedly he made the statement then that he would get in there and he would fire Woods. Well, he's got in there now, and yesterday he fired him. Wow. Yeah, no, I, I don't I don't know anything about that. Look that story up. You might find that very interesting. All right. Thanks for he sharing, was brother. The, uh, he was the winningest coach around there. Uh, he's, he's, he's in he's the top five. He's done it five, forever, yeah. For sure. Yeah. What, anyway, what was the reason well, for wanting to fire him? Uh, he didn't get a reason. He said he sent one of his minions to his house to fire him the way I read. So Ooh, drama. Wow. Exactly. But that there you go. That's All Kentucky right. basketball for you right there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, UT Sexy. Appreciate you. All right, uh the question. So if all of these if all these people are on the are, are still on the board at seven, who do you take? Dallas Turner, Brock Bowers, Alt, or one of those receivers? Neighbors Harrison Jr. Adunze. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. They're the best. They do a great job. Everybody here at this station does. You know who else does a great job? Outdoor lighting perspectives of Nashville. And uh, I want to tell you about them because maybe you have been thinking about needing some landscape lighting or festival lights, path lights, some wall washing, maybe tree lighting to make your house Uh, look beautiful and up the value of it. Well, Outdoor Lighting Perspectives of Nashville is who you need to call. Family business since 1986. Dedicated to efficient and long-term maintenance of everything they install. Uh, And by the way, they will also maintain somebody else's uh, and do maintenance on somebody else's lighting systems that they did not install. Uh, they are the, have the latest LED lighting technology, including full range color, warm white lighting. They do permanent roof line lighting by gemstone lighting. Uh, they really do everything. Full service holiday and event lighting as well. They do everything and they do it really well. I know because they did it in my backyard and lit up my driveway, which is awesome for the 12 year old to shoot hoops at night now. Um, And here's another beautiful thing about Outdoor Lighting Perspectives of Nashville. They are raising money right now for the Rally Foundation for Childhood Cancer Research. I told you we have our Rally on the Runway event with the Titans coming up on April 18th. And if you're thinking about outdoor lighting, now's a wonderful time to call them because all customers that purchase a lighting install up until April 18th, Outdoor Lighting Perspectives will give a $100 donation to Rally Foundation for Childhood Cancer Research in that customer's name. So now's a great time to jump in. Outdoor Lighting Perspectives of Nashville. You can find them online. Out outdoorlights.com slash Nashville. What is happening, good people? Why wouldn't you go to whywesley.com? Yeah, I would. Wesley Mortgage, they are currently recruiting top mortgage talents, and which means they're now hiring. You should get involved. Why is being ran by the one and only Chuck McDowell, the owner of it, and the local Nashville native, just like your guy himself, Ron Slay. Yes, we see eye and eye. Me and Chuck share the same thoughts, same principles, and it's all about helping the community. When you reach back and proud to serve their community, they reinvest. This is what Chuck is doing, reinvesting in the people and the place places that make Nashville such a wonderful place. So while other mortgage companies are downsizing, Chuck McDowell and Wesley Mortgage Team, they are rapidly expanding in Nashville, just like the city itself, keeping people working in a career they love, and they would love to have you join the team. Whywesley.com. That's all you got to do is go to that. And if you want to be involved with networking opportunities with the Titans, Music City Grand Prix, Nashville Predators, the sweet multiple, multiple, multiple real estate mortgage events throughout the year, you need to get on over there and join the team. Whywesley.com.
Three Tom 1045 the zone cruising through a Friday. Cruising. I see do I see three Tennessee hats over in Slay's spot along with a shaker, orange and white shaker. He calls it a pom pom. Mm-hmm. And a stuffed smoky. I'm surprised he didn't like take all of the UT stuff with him. He doesn't need that. <laughs> He's got twelve pounds of it sitting in his truck. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, I so I just started thinking about, you know, like little kid that needs like a bunch of stuffed animals or something. Like, I just think he needs a bunch of UT stuff on, on like around him on the drive up there. Mm. They left at three in the morning. <laughs> like him and how? Will from the Ville. I think they have a, they have somebody helping to drive them though. That is true. Do, uh, do we have an update on when Slay might be able to check in? We do not. Oh, well, we need to text him. Did he go dark in Detroit? I said, no problem. Just let me know when you're down there. I think you should text him back. <laughs> I will text him back. <laughs> Thank you. Joe maybe, fi- maybe around five. Executive producer, are you just trying to produce the show? Yeah. I'm just doing a few things. It's no big deal. Eh, no, we're good. We're good. <laughs> well, I can text him while I'm yeah. sitting here talking. <laughs> no, no, we, we need you two to focus. Trust me. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Trust me, it doesn't help. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. What a beautiful day, man! Is Good that what be- you're talking about, Honk? Good. I just looked <laughs> out the window and I'm like, yeah. oh man. Because look, if I look and out this the window, man was about to try to text during this right here. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, it's not like that's never happened before. Mm. Um, when I look out here, I see the Electric Jane Division Street, and then there's a Mexican restaurant on the corner of that building right there. I don't know the name of it, but I don't either. But I've eaten there. I have too. It's really good. But I look at the corner of that building and think, man, it's a nice day. Wouldn't a margarita be great right now? Yes. <laughs> How about that, Hunt? For the last hour of the show, go. Let's go get some margaritas. Oh yeah. I, no, I don't. I don't. I don't need that in my life right now. No, but you can no. go get them. I mean, just I turn the mics on. Them. We'll be good. I mean, when I went and got you guys food yesterday and just left the mics on, I just walked out and had the mics on. Went to go grab food for us. That's, that's true. That's why I, I went to get to go down to get the bag ladies. I was on assignment yesterday. I walk in late that and I come true. into the lobby at like 4 30 during uh Greg Hotel. And uh I come into the lobby and Hunk's at the front door. And I'm like, who is flying the plane? <laughs> Don and Slay. Th- well, watch out. Movie, speaking of plane, in the movie Airplane, the little inflatable guy. He was hanging out back here, just making sure everything was going. I had the <laughs> autopilot on. A little inflatable guy. Yeah, just yeah. that. Just, he was a really big inflatable guy. He was a massive one. I just had I was like, Greg. Just talk. They're good. All right. 615-737-1045. All right. Question for you. If you're sitting there at seven and all of these players are are available, I, I'll, I'll do the wide receivers in a second. But if Alt is there, Bowers is there, Dallas Turner is there, and one of those receivers, one of the three receivers, neighbors, Harrison Jr. or Adunze, who do you draft? Because one of those three... Look, man, everybody's got four quarterbacks now going in before the Titans. So that's only three picks. Did you add Dallas Turner in there? Mm-hmm. There's only three picks mm-hmm. that are non-quarterback. And hell, maybe the way things are going, maybe Bo Nixon's up there. I don't know. <laughs> that would be crazy. Partly the reason why I did that was to get your expression. <laughs> um, Tom says inflatable autopilot for the win. That's funny. <laughs> That is funny. We should get an inflatable guy. The guy hasn't had a job since that movie. I guess it has to do with the whole plane crashing thing. But, I mean, other than that, I mean, he needed work. It was a weird way to fill him up with air, too. Let's just say that. Um, I don't know what y'all are talking about. So, 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 seriously, four quarterbacks, it looks like, are going before seven. So, that's five, six, seven. So, there are three players. And so, you're talking about all... Neighbors, Harrison Jr., Adunze, Bowers, Dallas Turner. That's six players. So three of those dudes are going to be there. What do you do? And at least I tell one you of one the receivers. I don't do. Adunze. I'll tell you one I don't do. Adunze. No. What? Brock Bowers. You don't do Brock Bowers. Nope. Okay. Why? Tight end. At seven, I get that. Like the, when you have other needs, the and philosophy I just think that's of tight a end tight end seven. in in the top ten, a, a first round draft pick 
with a tight end, you go with a tight end in the top 10, no. Now, if you're moving back, then we can have a different conversation. But Yeah, no. let's let's take moving back not, out of it right now. We're taking moving back out of it. I do not go for this Brock conversation. Bowers. No you Brock go, Bowers. You don't go Brock Bowers. So if that's all, too high for shoot, I thought it was. If you're going to play Skaronsky as a guard, I thought it was too high for him. But. So are you alt or nothing? Like, are you alt over everything? Because now with four quarterbacks going before pick seven, three of these dudes are going to be there. I'm not necessarily alt, but yes, I am their highest rated. Offensive tackle. So you're at taking that spot. you're taking Brock Bowers out of it. Mm-hmm. What if it's Alt and Dallas Turner and one of, one of these receivers is going to be there? That's really hard. A Dunze I would take out too. Okay. If Marvin Harrison Jr. is sitting there at seven, you take him out of all of these six people, probably. And you I'm know totally me, I you have been O line no matter what. But if Marvin Harrison Jr. is sitting there at seven. I'm with you on that. You I'm, can't pass that. I'm with you on neighbors sitting at seven. If neighbors is sitting at Oof. seven, I take him. Either one of those guys, you're in on them. Yeah, and I like neighbors more than Harrison Jr. Because neighbor neighbors is neighbors can play outside inside like he's done. He did it at in the on the college level, so like he already has a grasp of those those things. I love Malik Neighbors. I'm not sure he doesn't go first in terms of the receivers. Well, there's been talk about that, but I, yeah. I feel like it's uh, it's Lion season. <clears throat> and the, the, that talk and hype has been done on purpose. And uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. has not helped his cause because he didn't talk to the media. He, he won't work out. <laughs> won't work out. I don't blame him. What does he have to gain? Absolutely nothing. Oh, let me go run a 40. That could put some questions in somebody's mind, which probably wouldn't. But there's always a chance. What if he has a bad day? Why is he going to work out? That's, there is no benefit for him to work out. By the way, did you see um, uh, Joe Milton ran a 455 at yeah. 245 pounds? I saw that. <laughs> that Somebody's going to take him higher than they should. Uh oh! I think we have a special caller on hold. Slade on. Oh dear. That's me. That's me. <laughs> what are you yeah, doing? I gotta have my time. I gotta have my time, man. Yes, sir. Set set the scene. Where are you? What are you doing? Man, we are right outside of. You know they got four. This is my first time in Detroit. First of all, so um, they got all the arenas and stadiums right next to each other. The the Tiger Stadium and then the Ford. Ford Field right here, so we're right next to it at 10 room. Yep, at Adams and Whipple. We got it going down, man. We got the tailgate. We're in the tent right now. Drinks are flowing. Um, there's a bunch, bunch of VFL legends in the building. Tony White, uh, Josiah James, Dad, all of us congregating. <laughs> Al used to just walk in. Man, we got, we're about to go on stage in just a minute. Smokey just left with the band, so... Yeah, Will and the Bill is in the building. We live and direct, man. It's black trucks pulling up left and right like the president on the way. <laughs> I don't know who it is, though. <laughs> hey, you're still over four hours away from tip, Slay. Babsy, I don't care. I'm trying to pass out, wake back up, and start cheering again. Oh, That's gosh. my goal. That's that is my goal right now. Oh, uh, the Chancellor Plowman just pulled up, too. I knew, I knew black trucks were pulling up for some reason. <laughs> That's what Plowman just put up. Okay, that's what it was. All right. Tyler on YouTube said, it's Slay Fried. Yes, he is. Why wouldn't he be? <laughs> fried? Why wouldn't I be fried? I love because that. Because you're over four hours away I'm from cr- Tip. I told you. I'm about to have him dip me again in the oil. <laughs> that's, how, that's how fried I'm trying to be. I love that you have Will Will from DeVille oh, there trying gosh. to keep you in check. That's a good thing. Yes. He's like telling make him be out of control too. all the important people that Will are coming Will in. is going to be out of control, too. Nobody would be in control when leaving this event for the game. Is Grant Williams yeah, dad there? <laughs> no, he ain't showed up. It's the Tony White walking out now. So I think we're about to go in for some Q&A. But I'm going to check right in, back in with you guys right after, and I'm going to tell you every even more. Chancellor Plowman want to give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Chancellor. Hi, Chancellor Plowman. See, that's what Palmer said. Y'all got a good party going on. See what I'm saying? <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. That's the energy right there, man. Yeah, she, knows where the, she knows where the party's at. I've seen her on the hill before a Tennessee football game. Mm-hmm. She knows where yeah, to go. Follow me. 
Follow me. That's what you do. <laughs> All, right, All right, go we'll do your Q&A with uh, <laughs> the legend. Guess who's doing the Q&A? Guess who's leading it? You. Me. And then Chris Lowe is taking over and asking me questions. <laughs> this is a hell of a scene, <laughs> man. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll hear from you in a minute. All right, man. Later. Oh my Hold on. So Ron Slay is asking Tony, Tony White, White questions. questions. Then when they're done, Chris Lofton is going to be interviewing Ron Slay. Was it Chris Lofton or Chris Lowe? I'm going to say Chris Lowe. No. We said CeeLo. And we, no, there's no, no, two no. Of them. It's Lofton. Is it Lofton? Yes. Huh. And who did he say? Alan Houston's there. And somebody's dad, Josiah Jordan James' dad. <laughs> Starting early. <laughs> and Ch- and Chancellor Plowman pulls up. She just walked up. Drinks are flowing. I told you yesterday, you were like, oh, the game's at 10 09. He's got, he's got a slow roll that day. I'm like, huh? I'm a little worried about and him. You said it earlier. He it. had somebody drive them up there. Oh, man. <laughs> Do you think it's we're going to get a, like a legit analysis of this game from him in a little while? Yes, because sometimes when he hits that moment when he's fried, he's like all business. Fried business. <laughs> business. Uh, all right, so. All right, Titans, what would you do? Right, so four quarterbacks, that's key, right? So the, yes. really the Titans have the third pick. Right. So do you go all Brock Bowers, Dallas Turner, or one of these receivers is going to be their neighbors, Harrison Jr. or Adunze. 615-737-1045. Antonio next up on 3HL. Antonio, what's up? Hey, what's going on, y'all? Hey, hey, hey this is Ron Slay getting messed up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, anyway, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Titans, round one, pick seven. So uh, what you got to think about is, is this a strong draft or is this a weak draft? Well, it's different for I think it's every position. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> that's what the general manager has to take into consideration, like, every year. So we don't know if this is a strong draft or weak draft. But having said that, if uh, he, he was compared to Megatron, he was compared to Calvin Johnson, um, Marvin Harrison Jr., if he's at seven, at seven, you take a playmaker. Mm-hmm. They're hard to so find. See, that's my play? that's my argument. Like when you look around the league, like I mean, Justin Jefferson right. just isn't sitting out there. You know what I mean? Well, right. neither are good offensive linemen. Clearly, <laughs> yeah. I know they need it. I'm just saying, like three years from now, if you've got that guy on a rookie contract still, then then bad, you've also me, got uh, you've also got your receiver uh, ages and contracts kind of staggered too right like with mm-hmm. i mean how much how D-hop. many more how many more years for d hop to calvin calvin ridley right, and then, right. yeah so i don't know but i i think you're right mm-hmm. i think if marvin Harrison jr is there at seven you have to take him right and then and then i feel you on that i feel you on that offensive lineman because we lost uh bruce we lost um mm-hmm. uh what's the uh, number seven seven uh i forgot one i'm going taylor yeah yeah lost him and uh, so we're, we're kind of hurting left tackle. So I feel you on getting a, a tackle at seven, but at seven, if a playmaker is there, get the playmaker because we have one of the best uh, offensive line coaches in the nation. So we could teach somebody to be offensive line. I mean, I know, I, you're, but... you're, talk, you're talking to the, uh, the show that anointed him, OLJ, Offensive Line Jesus. So, yeah, we agree with you <laughs> oh, on that. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. All right, Antonio. They thank you, brother. You Appreciate there. it, man. Have a good weekend. Oh, yeah. It's a show. show. Yep. Uh, I heard Blaine talking about it, too. He's like, you, he goes, I really wish you could, like, entertain one of these playmakers, but where they are in terms of their roster, like, you need a left tackle. He goes, and I'm not even sold on the front side tackle. No. Like, Nicholas petit Frere. MPF. I like, mean, do, is what he we, your guy? Don't know. We don't even know. Don't know. He showed flashes. I feel better about him over there than whatever the hell they got at left. Yeah. Which is nothing. Nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You better fill that spot. Yeah. Later. I the only one I would take over an alt or a fashion or or you know whoever they have 
highest rated. So the small hands doesn't? I don't the, know. The jazz hands doesn't mess you up with fashion new? I don't know. I don't He's know got what eight. to think about that. Like Joe Milton Small. is 10 and something. Joe Milton <laughs> is not human. I don't know if you've go, noticed. Go look at Zach Pillar's hands, former Titan offensive lineman. His ain't eight. He ain't human either. <laughs> That's a big man. Uh, anyway, the only one I would take over that is Marvin Harrison Jr. 615-737-1045. You know what I'm sold on on second round pick? Uh, and And... Cosell did it, and I already was kind of in it. But Cosell did it, and Coach Mack did it. Edger and Cooper, the yep. linebacker from Texas A&M. If he's there. Yep. 615-737-1045. Again, the question. It looks like four quarterbacks are going, so the Titans have really the third pick of the draft, if you think about it. Coach Mack always says there's a quarterback draft, and then there's the rest of the draft. So the rest of the draft, they get picked three. And so these six players, three of them would be there. All neighbors. Harrison Jr., Adunze, Brock Bowers, Dallas Turner, who you take? 615-737-1045. I have a question, too. Does it change your thinking knowing that the Titans probably aren't contenders this next year? We'll be right back. 104.5 The Zone. You know who is the best at helping you organize your house or giving you a show-stopping closet or creating an entire home office for you? That would be Artisan Custom Closets. You can visit them at Artisan, A-R-T-I-S-A-N, customcloset.com. Say goodbye to clutter. Hello to calm in 2024 with Artisan. And I mentioned the show-stopping closet. If you want that, they can do that. Uh, but I actually used Artisan Custom Closets for my garage because there was stuff everywhere. You couldn't even walk through it. Nothing was organized. Uh, and they came in, gave me 3D plans of what they were going to do. Everything has a place. The bikes, the basketballs, the uh, equipment, lawn equipment. Everything has a place, and it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And I got to pick out of those 3D plans um, what I wanted to keep, what I wanted to change, and it was all within my budget and then installed in less than a day. They were the best. Artisan makes it easy to create calm. So bring calm to your home and get organized. Call 615 8 800-2199. That's 800-2199. Or visit artisancustomcloset.com to book your appointment. What is happening, good people? Don't you want to get some exceptional style? You know where to get it. You want exceptional deals? You know where to go get it. Every single day for over 50 years, it's been happening. 7012 Church Street East, right there located in the heart of Brentwood, just off Franklin Road. Brentwood Jewelry is what I'm talking about. Brentwoodjewelry.com if you don't have the time to walk into the store to get the family fun atmosphere that Brandon and his people a give you. Once you walk in, I promise you, they're going to be right there to wait on you. Make sure you get everything you're looking for. And if you just are wondering and just, you know, window shopping a little bit, great place to be as well. You may have a gift that's coming up that you need to go get an engagement that you want to work on. Whatever it may be, Mother's Day, Father's Day, don't forget about us, and birthdays, whatever it is, man, they do not miss where you're looking for watches, diamonds for the, that special lady or that special someone. This is the place to be. Go on over to Brentwood Jewelry. Tell them Big Slate sends you over there. They do have new hours, though, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and always a phone call away or a click away. BrentwoodJewelry.com.
Three eight one zero four five. The zone. Prince already Don Davenport with you. Sweet sixteen coming up tonight. The other eight teams playing. Looking forward to it. A lot of great basketball coming up. Should be a fun night. It should be, and uh, like from a Tennessee fan perspective, I'm glad the Tennessee game is the last one. You are. Mm-hmm. I hate that it's late. It gives you a chance. At least to, it's a Friday night. It gives you kind of a chance to ramp up to it. You know. It's almost like having the appetizer with the first two games, <laughs> knowing that you could just sit there and relax for a second and yeah. then get ramped up later. So, but you know me, I love like late night sports. What's the first game, NC State? NC State and uh, Marquette. Marquette. Yeah, at 609. Gonzaga and Purdue at 639. I love how they stagger these things. Uh, they need to then, stagger them more. Then you don't have to watch halftime. Um, Duke and Houston at 839. So that one will be over close to 11. And then uh, Tennessee and Creighton at 9.09 p.m. on TBS. 11, that's going after 11, 11.30 maybe? Mm-hmm. On a Friday night? At least it's a Friday night. <laughs> Word up. 615-737-1045, that's right. Um, we asked a question for this hour. When you start thinking about it, looks like four quarterbacks are going before, excuse me, before the Titans pick. At seven, which means they're really picking third. So you start p- thinking about the left tackle, Alt, from Notre Dame, Brock Bowers, defensive end Dallas Turner, and then at least one of these receivers will be their neighbors, Harrison Jr. and Dunze. Where do you go at seven if you're the Titans? And we're taking, like, trade. I would love to trade back. Like, I would love for them to acquire draft capital because I, I think the needs are varied and great. Um. But for this exercise, you pick at seven. Who are you taking? 615-737-1045. Ryan in Nashville. Ryan, what up? What's going on, guys? Tell us. <laughs> Sitting in traffic, you know. Just same old, same old. Isn't that hey, weird? On a day where most people are off, traffic is awful. I think some people it's are awful. traveling. It, Maybe. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day, and it's just everybody just, just – seems to forget how to drive around here so um <laughs> hey, don't get dog so, started on that one i'm with you <laughs> so what i want to ask is who who's going to is arizona going to take a quarterback or do you think they're going to trade with somebody because i, I hear it, you guys saying four quarterbacks yeah i think i think arizona um well the thought is that minnesota could trade up there and take their quarterback because Justin, I mentioned Justin Jefferson earlier. He won't sign his long term deal because he wants to see what they do at quarterback. So he's kind of putting pressure on them. So the thought is that the Vikings will trade up or who's the other team? Um, not the Raiders. Denver? There's another team that, oh, Denver. Denver that yeah, Denver Broncos. will trade up to get a quarterback. And Maybe they, both of them. They have had heavy, heavy contingents at all the quarterbacks' pro days. Broncos have. Hmm. Well, see, what I was thinking is, is I feel like Harrison is hurt. Like, like you said earlier, Harrison's hurting his stock because he's not talking to nobody. He's not working out. And I feel like neighbors could potentially be that first one off the board. But going um, to the Chargers, I think they're going to take all. And I think the Giants take Fashanu. And then you get there at seven, you got neighbors or Harrison. Which one do you take? I don't think you take Bowers. I think that's too early. Mm-hmm. But if you got Harrison and, and Neighbors, what do you do? I, I mean, like Neighbors personally, but that, that, part of that might be because I've seen him play so many times. Mm-hmm. Um, being an SEC guy and watching so much LSU, but man, that guy lines up all over the field already. Like, I mean, he is. And he advanced. had a heck of a pro day. Forty-two inch vertical, yeah. four three five forty. Like this dude is a dude. So, I I appreciate the call, Ryan. Appreciate it. Yeah, I guess I should have said that. Like, so the thought is that either Denver or Minnesota jump up there in front of the Titans and take a quarterback, right? Like, Mm -hmm. so that would be the four quarterback thing. And then you've got the Chargers who will go wide receiver or Joe Alt, right? And then you've got the Giants who will go wide receiver, apparently. Um, So maybe, maybe Alt's gone, maybe Harrison Jr.'s gone, and Malik Neighbors is sitting there. In this exercise, we'll have lots of exercises between now and the end of April. 615-737-1045. Anthony in Austin, Texas. Anthony, what's up? 
Hey, how's it going, y'all? Good, happy Good Friday. Hope everyone's doing good. Yes, you sir. Too. Hey, uh, so no, just trying to give my opinion on this case because honestly, it's like it, this is like this beginning part just annoys me because like there's so many ways you can go about it, so many options. It's like you never know what's going to happen to the day of. But um, I mean, I guess I'm just going to say like I, I guess the one thing to start off like if the times were to stay at seven. I think we could all agree that the Times are going to get a franchise player. Like, whether that's receiver, online, like, I think they're going to get a, a really solid player for us. Um, however, I don't think that they would go defense first, basically depending on how this offense was last year. I mean, obviously, this offense needs to overhaul. We've done so good so far in the free agency, but it's like, why not add to it when we have the playmakers there available? But I'm also starting to get to the point where, like, if y'all are saying, like, if four quarterbacks really do go off and we're basically picking third, I mean, it's almost like a trade back is, is going to be the best choice because when you trade back, I would think we're going to get if not another first-round pick like by Minnesota or something. We're going to get at least another second, if not an also another third, to where, like everyone's been saying, again, I'm yes. not an expert, I'm just a fan. There's so much depth in this draft that – it seems like trading back would be the better option because whether we trade back to the teams or whatever, there's going to be a, a good player we're going to get, whether O-line, D-line. Uh- Whoa. He just sniped himself, I think. Huck, did you do that? A- Anthony, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Can okay, you know sorry, mean? man. You got put on hold somehow. Oh, my goodness. Let's see how it is. Because <laughs> I, 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 I don't agree with you. Oh, oh yeah. no, I'm totally kidding. Well, <laughs> no, Anthony, to your point, though, like I'm all for trading back because I think they need to pick. And if, if they can trade back to 11, 12, 13, they're going to pick up a, like multiple picks. Right. And exactly. so, and, and so and I'm, like I'm saying, with that I mean, idea. But for pick. this exercise, we're staying at seven and trying to figure out who you take. All right. So for this, if we're staying at seven, then that based on how Callahan's talking, I'm thinking they're going receiver. Now, of course, we need the O-line help. I mean, everybody knows that. But, I mean, if the if the, if the the draft is really that deep in O-line help, then, yeah, why wouldn't you go with the receiver? Why wouldn't you go with the big playmaker? You got Hopkins, uh, Ridley. I mean, I think Burks can do better in this offense. And then you add a fourth all-star receiver. Like, who's going to stop that offense? Who's going to stop it? I love it, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. I mean, the head coach was talking to me. Maybe we can pull that cut back up, huh? Because um, actually it wasn't a cut. It was me reading a quote from him. But he was talking about how they can create time based on the wide receivers and quick throw game mm-hmm. and the scheme, um, but there's, which was interesting. There's only so much you can do, though. Right. 615-737-1045. I mean, if you, if you have that garbage of protection, there's only so much you can do. I, I agree with that, but it's like when he's saying things like that, it just – it feels like he philosophically believes that you know what i mean that you can overcome like and he actually i'll read the quote when we come back (laughs) you can actually overcome a battle yeah because i have a comment on that okay good 615-737-1045 Imagine that you can wake up uh, this time next week, next Friday, and boom, you're 100% debt-free. No credit cards, no car loan debt, no personal loan. Loan Pronto is who you would have called to be able to do it because Loan Pronto has this equity express line of credit that can make it all happen. And a lot of homeowners are turning their home equity into cash with Loan Pronto's AI. AI-based system that you can start the entire process at LoanPronto.com. You can get approval in about 10 minutes. How about that? Almost no documentation needed, no appraisal, no hassle, huh? You can get hundreds of thousands of dollars out of your home, use the money to pay off all your other high-interest loans, and their average homeowner saves about $850 $850 a month doing this. That's a lot. Your home value is up. Use it to wipe out your credit card debt. Get hundreds of thousands at your fingertips and approval minutes away with Loan Pronto. 615-499-5780. LoanPronto.com at 499-5780. NMLS 1661781. Subject to lender approval. Equal housing lender.
Good evening from the 104.5 The Zone Studios. I'm Joe Hunk. Six o'clock is when we begin that coverage tonight. Westwood One's coverage of the Sweet 16 as well as the Elite Eight is brought to you by Old South Properties and Farm Bureau Health Plans. Tonight you're going to get NC State versus Marquette, then Gonzaga versus Purdue, Duke and Houston. But at 8.30 we will swap over and go strictly into our Tennessee Vols coverage as they tip off at 9 o'clock against Creighton. You have the Eagles making a trade just a little while ago. Hassan Reddick has been traded to the New York Jets. The Jets are going to take on all 14 and a half million of that deal. Last year, Hassan Reddick had 11 sacks and 23 QB hits. And Vanderbilt got their first transfer under Mark Byington, and it's a guy he's very familiar with because Jalen Carey was a freshman at James Madison last year in 36 games. He scored seven points on average as well as 4.3 rebounds per game. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols, the flagship station for you, Tennessee Titans, as well as home to 3HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. Three HL one zero four five. The Zone. What up, Nashville? Hope you're having a great Friday out there. A good Friday. Good. Good, good Friday. Happy Easter weekend coming up. And it will be filled with basketball. And then once this tournament is over, it's all on draft. NFL owns it. And that's all any of the talking shows will be talking about, the talking head shows, where they scream at each other. Um, They already (laughs) kind of are. (laughs) Um. Props to, like, Stephen A. Smith and those guys. Like, I don't know if you you dig what they do and stuff like that, but I will say this. From an energy perspective, I respect the hell out of them being able to do that every day. To just go out there and just start screaming about stuff for three hours. Can you imagine having to do that every no. day? No. Like, I feel good about the energy level that we bring. Like, because to me, that's one of the things that we can control. We can't control a lot of things, but we can control energy. And I feel like we bring a good energy. But that is, like, next. Can you imagine? No, and I feel like you just can't be that passionate about every single thing every single day. It becomes disingenuous. Yeah. Right? It's weird. So, I mean, on this deal, like, we never fake a thought. You know what I mean? Like, No. And I think that's the beauty of, like, the that three of them. That takes way too much energy. <laughs> right. I mean, but I think, uh, I think like, the natural um, diversity of personality types of the three of us and Hunk, and throw Hunk in there, um, <laughs> leads us Hunk's to have. Hunk's liability. <laughs> There's a good reason why my mic's off a lot. <laughs> well, you control it. I know. And there's a very good reason why, because I like my job. <laughs> You have a governor on you? Uh, oh, I have to. Because trust me, if I did what Stephen A. Smith did, I might be fired. Because I would offend way too many people, and I would do it without cussing. I would just say so many hurtful true. things that they would just they would just be like, okay, yeah, we need to stop with him. But if you're going to pay me like $4 million or whatever he gets paid per yep. year, I mean, I'll go ahead and do it gladly. I'll yell at everybody for that. I don't care if I know what, I, what, if I know what I'm doing or not. I mean, they don't. Tennessee and Creighton going at it tonight, 9.09 <laughs> p.m. Central Time, the tip on TBS. Uh, we've got uh, four games tonight. We'll work uh, through those, talk about it a little bit more uh, as we roll through the 5 o'clock hour. But the question uh, going now, if if we're – so this is a hypothetical situation where Minnesota or Denver trades in front of the Titans and four quarterbacks go, okay? And then there are three of these players that are still there, Alt, Brock Powers, Dallas Turner, Neighbors, Harrison Jr., or Adunze. Who do you take? 615-737-1045. Mark is calling uh, from Lawson High School. Is that right, Mark? Uh, Not far. Just over the hill from the Lawson Lightning. How are you? I'm great. Let me tell you, that school, uh, so Hillwood went bye-bye, and Lawson High School is unbelievably beautiful. Well, I, I appreciate it. I'm actually the marketing director there. We got a special place in the community that is supporting us like no other. Yeah, we've done uh, little kid basketball stuff there. Um, so yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's it's an incredible view. It's an incredible campus. Congratulations! You played in the Thunderdome then. Thunderdome. Yep. Uh, yes. Yes. That in the Shock Center. 
Um, real quick, before I give you my draft opinion, Dawn, I got to say thank you. You hold a special place in my heart as a dad. 2011, 2012, you casted a lot of love on, on one of my sons that was Ingle Martin's first uh, quarterback, and you did a great job of covering high school sports. And every time I hear your voice, it warms my heart. Oh, I love that. Thank you. What's your son up to? Uh, he is actually working for a major nationwide company, married with two kids and 29 years old to make a globe. <laughs> what's, what's his name? Dang it. That makes me uh, feel old. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, Albert Mitchell. That was the English Oh, Martin's I first love uh, Albert. Yeah. He's the best, yeah, he, best family. Very cool. He married a, uh, a college track girl, and he's got a little girl and a little boy, so we may get to watch sports again one day. Yeah, there you're going to have some athletes there. <laughs> Love it. Man, I Look, just got a little quick. emotional. Well, I mean, you, you're a special place. Every time I hear your voice, I, it takes me back there. Um, so, real quickly, has there ever been a great quarterback that was able to be great without a time to throw? No. Was there ever a great running back, other than maybe Barry Sanders, who could make a hole? Um, who had a all-pro season without a good line. And there's never been a great receiver without time to get open and a quarterback time to pass. We have put this off for too long. I would take every ferocious lineman they would let me have, and the very players on our team could be all-pro with time to do what they do. We got a quarterback that would be outstanding with tons of time to stand back there. We got great receivers. You know, we've got a Spears and, and the new running back. They could have all pro seasons with an outstanding butt kicking line. I would take Alt. I would take anybody else that even smelled like a lineman. That was, <laughs> that, was, that, was, that, was that was ferocious. And and stock up. If you look at all these big teams make it to the end, they got ungodly lines. Love it. We have to we have we have to focus there. All so right. I think Dawn was saying we need line. Dawn, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, she's got it written in front of her on a piece of paper. I do. O-line no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what. Stack them, stack, them, stack them up tall and high. I mean, just get it as many as we can get. I love it. And get to work. We have all the time in the world and the big holes, and the rest will take care of itself. I mean, the beautiful yep. thank, you, thank you, Mark, for checking Thanks, in, Mark. man. It's good to hear from you, man. Appreciate Tell you. Tell Albert hi. <laughs> I'll do it. Take care. Perfect. Um, no, but he, he brings up a great point of your other playmakers, your quarterback, everybody's better if you have, if you're given the time, the reality of the situation is if you're picking a seven and you go Joe all like, I'm, I'm not going to be like, what a bad pick. Blah, blah, blah. I'm not doing right. it. Of course it would be a great pick because they do need that for sure. Not to um, Cosell. <laughs> what's that? Not to Greg Cosell. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, he just doesn't like his tape. Right. He just doesn't nothing, love it. He doesn't dislike it. He just doesn't yes. love it. Right. And f- he likes the Oregon state guy more. Yes. What's that guy's name? Fuwanu or? Yes. <laughs> this is the quote that I read yesterday, and uh, and and again to to Don's point, um, you're you're in all honesty looking beyond this year in terms of them being able to compete for a championship, right? And that's what I said. Does and you're that trying to stack the roster. Change to move how forward? you view this question. Right. Because like Vegas, we got the who is it that we we got we got an email from uh one of the companies. Betonline.ag. Betonline.ag, yeah. They have they are the longest odds to win the AFC Titans. So that like that's that's yeah, where they and are. And this is after the free agency. Yeah, moves. that's right now. Right now. Which is bizarre to me. But that's where Vegas is. But it's not. It's not bizarre because of, of the amount of holes that the Titans still the, have. The win total is five and a half. I think they win more than five and a half. I think they're better than the Patriots. I think they're better than the Broncos. I don't think they're the worst team in the AFC. I could probably come up with some more. I bet they're better than the Jets. I don't disagree with you. Yeah. Yeah. This is the comment but I read AFC yesterday. AFC South. I, I'm not even sure they finished last in the AFC South. What do we know about Anthony Richardson? Yeah, we don't know yet. You're right. Has Minshew hit the ceiling? 615-737-1045. You know the Texans are the uh, far favorite. <laughs> right. Um, does C.J. Stroud have a sophomore slot? 
I just have to ask questions. No. <laughs> like, we're not screaming he at each other. He also has protection. I do have to ask questions. Yeah. Um. Wait, I did see something on. Okay, you can watch the show YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. Twitch, please. F and M Bake Chat is open. Randy said, speaking, of, we were talking about uh, screaming Ace Smith and those guys. Mm. Um, Buck and Babs would be screaming match from start to finish. LOL. No doubt. We've talked about doing. I like also a, said I would definitely win that battle every day against him. We've talked about doing like a one-off show one day where we go on remote. And yeah, I know it's a little late to plan, but April Fool's Day is a real fun day that you could do that. Yeah, we'll buy you donuts for four dollars oh, and one day. cent from Krispy Kreme. We a could dozen. buy we could buy three dozen for the normal price. Come to find out, I didn't know a dozen donuts cost you fifteen dollars. Yes, yeah. God, inflation, man, <laughs> killing us. Even donuts, man. Hot donut. They honestly though, with the hot sign, they can charge whatever the hell they want. Especially at one a.m. when nothing else is open, it becomes a drug at that point, right? Do you think that this deal is really going on, or is this an April Fool's deal? Uh, I saw it from People Magazine on Twitter. You can't April Fool's people before April Fool's, can you? No. Oh, we told you it was going to be $4, but April Fool's. Oh, they say it then. (laughs) They say it at the register. Yeah. (laughs) Woo, you want to talk about pissed. Uh, This is what Brian uh, Callahan had to say. I have to be careful with it because talking about Cincinnati and and philosophy and offensive lines that aren't very good and all these things. This is one of my favorite quotes from him, this entire thing you're about to read so far. This is uh, A to Z Sports put this out there. Mm -hmm. Brian Callahan, Titans coach. You know what? I'll read it when we come back. What in the? I have to. We got a break. He just told me to break. It's going to take me a minute, and you're going to want to react to it. You're right. So I would have to read it again anyway. And it's long. Yeah. So this quote that you find to be the most fascinating thing that Brian Callahan has said since becoming Titans coach, we will read when we come back. <laughs> 3HL 1045 The Zone. Heavy. What is happening, good people? Don't you want to get some exceptional style? You know where to get it. You want exceptional deals? You know where to go get it. Every single day for over 50 years has been happening. 7012 Church Street East right there located in the heart of Brentwood just off Franklin Road. Brentwood Jewelry is what I'm talking about. Brentwoodjewelry.com if you don't have the time to walk into the store to get the family fun atmosphere that Brandon and his people a give you once you walk in i promise you they're going to be right there to wait on you make sure you get everything you're looking for and if you just are wondering and just you know window shopping a little bit great place to be as well you may have a gift that's coming up that you need to go get an engagement that you want to work on whatever it may be mother's day father's day don't forget about us and birthdays whatever it is man they do not miss where you're looking for watches diamonds for that special lady or that special someone this is the place to be Going over to Brentwood Jewelry. Tell them Big Slate sends you over there. They do have new hours, though, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and always a phone call away or a click away. BrentwoodJewelry.com.
3HL 104 5 The Zone. Brent Doherty, Don Davenport with you. Slade, I'm going to check in after his QA, his fried <laughs> QA with all the Tennessee past players and the Chancellor and somebody's dad and all this stuff in Detroit. Slade By the on. way, it was Chris Lowe. I thought it was Lofton. It was Chris Lowe? How did but, you find out? Did you text him? I texted him. Joe did. Joe? Who's Joe? Who's Joe? Some. Hunk did. <laughs> Joe Diffie. RIP. 615-737-1045. Uh, Tyler says OLJ on YouTube. Tyler says OLJ turning water into cutlass pickle wine. Mm, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I'm going to get to this quote in just a second because... Um, Brian Callahan has been fascinating since taking this job. He tells you exactly what he thinks. I, how refreshing is that? There's no way it's going to last. Y'all don't jump on him. Let, let it Ran go. Ran too. Let it go. Ran too. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, before we do that, let's grab John in Hendersonville. John, what's up, man? Hey, folks. Hi. Love your show. Love you guys. Thank, Thank you, you, brother. Yeah, man. Uh, so, question. Uh, my family moved here uh, about a, well, July, and football's easy, hockey's easy, but who do most people here root for as far as Major League Baseball? Okay, so. It's funny. We just talked about this a little bit yesterday. So, growing up <laughs> here, it was, all, so the Reds games used to be on uh, TV, my TV 30. Um the Braves games were on TBS. The Cubs games were on um, WTN. And people listened to the Cardinals on KMOX radio be- because it stretched into here. So longtime Nashville people are typically mostly Braves fans, um, I think, because it's easy to get there. But also you have a pocket of Reds fans. You have a pocket of Cubs fans. You have a pocket of Cardinals fans. Now so many people have moved into the city that it's so spread out. Now, we don't talk a lot about baseball, even though I freaking love baseball. So does Hunt. <laughs> so, and Babs does it. Um, because we don't have a team. But Nashville is going to get a team. And it's going sure. to happen. So, um, interesting question. But that's kind of that's kind of how, how it rolls here. Got it. Okay. And you just, in terms of sports radio here in town, you kind of spray the love around to the whole league. Uh, you don't necessarily bias towards one team or another. Uh, I mean, baseball wise, we, yeah. we typically yeah. don't talk about it, honestly, unless there is a big story that's happened or, you know, the Braves went 15 in a row or something. You know what I mean? And, like, it's right, right, and, right, right. And we would love to have a team where we could talk baseball more. But, you know, I tell people all the time, like, topically, we got to play the hits. Yeah. I so, what, what, who's your team? Well, we moved here from Dallas, so it was a Ranger situation, okay. uh, you know. But uh, I'm I'm interested. Maybe the Reds. That would be that would be different for me. And yep. you know, they've gotten better Reds too. Not forever away. It's fairly doable. Yep. Yeah. There's a, there's you. a lot of Reds fans here. I got you, brother. Okay. All hey, right. Don't Appreciate don't be it. a stranger, John. All right, you got welcome it. to Thanks. town. Yeah. Appreciate it. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Look at this. Welcome it's, to traffic. It has uh, led to baseball talk. Jamie in White House. Jamie, what's up? <laughs> well, hey, I know that you definitely uh, know Braves are easier to get to, okay? But as a little kid watching the big red machine, Johnny Bench, Pete Rose, Dave Parker, um, before they were on 30, they were on Channel 17 when we only had two, four, five, Channel 8 for Sesame Street. But Channel 17 was what carried every Reds game. And I do believe at the time the Sounds was a Reds affiliate. Um, so I would have to say I'm 50. So going back even before cable television came in, the, the majority of Nashville was actually Reds. There was a big change uh, as cable television came in. Okay, so I, I, I got here in 1984. Um, but, yeah, they were a Reds affiliate because Chris Sabo played uh, for the Sounds. Um, Cardinals, you had Willie McGee that played here. Um, I mean, you can go down the list. Uh, Man, sounds games as a kid at Greer Stadium. Mm. That was so much fun. 615-737-1045 at 3HL1045. Yeah, Rob Dibble uh, and Bob brings up. I I remember uh, sitting, like we would go to the bullpen, and you could stand right behind the players, like the pitchers that were sitting in the bullpen, and they tell incredible stories. And one guy was telling a story about, um, coming up with the bases, lo- uh, coming out there with the bases loaded, and Jack Clark was up, and like he kind of went through that 
that at bat, and I, I just f- found that fascinating. But, uh, yeah, Dibble would sit over there and, like, yell at people in the crowd. It was funny. 615-737-1045 at 3HL1045. All right, you want this Callahan quote? Yes, and just a heads up, too, we just got the uh, official email from the Titans that the Legereus Sneed deal has gone through. Oh, okay, people yep. were worried about that, that it hadn't gone through, and and from what I was told, it was like, uh, it's don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. We, have, we have the full numbers of everything that's involved. What do you got? Uh, it is uh, Legereus Sneed, and a 2024 seventh-round pick was sent to Nashville from Kansas City, and in return, Kansas City is getting a 2024 seventh-round pick and a 2025 third-round pick. Right. Okay, so So we knew that, but that it's the Titans officially, it, yeah. yeah. Official, official, official. Out there. By the way, um, Done. the Braves were down... The Braves were tied with the Phillies 2-2 two to two in the eighth inning mm-hmm. and scored seven runs in the eighth. <laughs> Wild pitches. Ronald Acuna Jr. got a, got a hit or two. Matt Olson got a hit. Yeah, just they walked a couple in. No homers. No, in Philly, which is crazy. But, yeah, no homers. None at Which all. is awesome because as a Braves fan, all you want to do is just make Phillies fans miserable. Oh, it was 2 nothing <laughs> for the longest time. And Battery then chuckers. Adam Duvall got a <laughs> two-run hit to tie it up, and then from there it was all Atlanta. 615-737-1045. So that game was 2-2 two to two in the eighth, and I had <laughs> – I put a little – I splashed a little on Braves, Phillies, over seven and a half runs. So I was like, screw it, I, that's done. And then I saw that you have a winning ticket from Sportsbook. I'm like, <laughs> how? How did that happen? Baseball, man. Uh, Brewers also took down the Mets today. And again, uh, if you want to feel old, speaking of the Brewers, Jackson Chorio, first person to hit the majors for the Brewers, born in 2004. How about that? Jeez. All right, I'm going to find this email. Oh, okay. first, Bill in Columbia has a baseball question. Bill, what's oh. up? Yo, Bill. No, that's, Bill. That's weird. Bill gone. No, he's still there. I know. Well, it made a, I'm here. There oh, there he, he is. is. Bill. Hey, Bill. I don't know what just happened. It, like, my phone gave me a weird icon that I've never seen before, and you weren't there, and now you are because Unk pulled you up. So, You're back. Hi. Well, hi, guys. How are you? We're good. good. Yeah, hey, thanks for taking my call. I've got a question since we started a little baseball topic. It seems like Major League Baseball hates Nashville, but they blocked. The Reds are blocked. The Cardinals are blocked. I mean, I guess we could watch Oakland, but nobody wants to do that. <laughs> yeah. They don't even want to go to the stadium. Well, I mean, right. yeah. I mean, I get the baseball package, so, like, we're about to hit a time of year where I'll just start, like, I, that's all, what I'll watch at night. Yeah. You know? But if you're if you're a fan of any team, I mean, the closest team is the Braves. That makes sense to block out, so I'll get more people. But, you know, driving to Cincinnati, you know, or – St. Louis from here, that doesn't seem like that should be in the same market to St. block Louis, other things. Yeah, St. Louis is about five hours. Um, I don't know about it's Cincinnati. probably about the same as Atlanta with traffic. <laughs> man, Chattanooga is the worst. Worst. Um, I don't know how Chattanooga is like. Man, we talk, thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. Um, we, we talk about traffic here. To, oh, yeah. Since he is four and a half hours. Yeah. We talk about traffic here. It doesn't matter what time of day you roll through Chattanooga on that interstate, but the way that that thing was made with that hairpin turn, right, going up the hill, there's always right traffic the in Chattanooga of downtown. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I, we just need a, a major league team here. Call it a day. Wouldn't Make that be, it happen? Wouldn't that be amazing to go like sit on a Saturday afternoon and mm-hmm. it's like eighty degrees and you sit there and you eat it, you drink a beer and you eat a hot dog, right, Babsy? Minus the hot dog, but yeah. <laughs> we found out yesterday. Have that some cracker jacks. That Babs is anti hot dog because yeah. it uh, it'll choke you. I mean, it is the number one choking hazard. <laughs> All right, here is here's Brock Callahan Just again, uh, kind of talking about his philosophy offensively is kind of how I read through this. Uh, but he talks about, you know, running an offense with a bad offensive line. It's funny how, like, he just calls it out, you know? Like, we had mm-hmm. bad offensive line. If I'm a Bengals offensive lineman from that day and I'm, like, reading this, like, hey, coach. But he just tells you what he thinks. He said, talk, and also talking about what they were thinking when putting together that roster because of Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, right? Mm-hmm. So he said, I have to be careful with it because he's so unique, talking about Burrow, that I don't want to just say we can replicate this, Callahan said. 
So that's been my challenge. Here are all the things that I love, but some of it's like, man, as we watch cut-ups from the last couple of years trying to teach parts of the system that we have in Tennessee, it's like, God, Jamar is really good. <laughs> and so is Special. Joe Burrow. It's hard to just say, we're going to do this. But I think there's a core concept family that Joe was really good at, and I think it's kind of a general passing game philosophy that I think is very applicable to a lot of quarterbacks. And we in Cincinnati probably dropped back more than a lot of teams did, partly because of Joe and our strength was our receivers. But a lot of our drop back game is quick. It's timing based. It's got the ability to protect the quarterback in that regard. So he thinks he can protect the quarterback with players on the outside, which is a philosophy I have not heard before. But it makes sense if you go back and think about um, the West Coast offense that Bill Walsh had at San Francisco, right? Like, it was out of the quarterback's hands so fast, you weren't going to get pressure. Mm -hmm. And, like, with the Bing I remember playing the Bengals, and 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 we would have people on break breaking it down. They were like, don't blitz. You're not going to get there. Miami, that was another one. The Miami Dolphins, don't blitz. You're not going to get there. Which I think is interesting. So, to go back to that, um, let's see, where were we? Uh, and we in Cincinnati probably dropped back more than a lot of teams did, be, partly because of Joe and our strength was our receivers. But a lot of our drop back game is quick. It's timing based. It's got the ability to protect the quarterback in that regard. And obviously, we played with some offensive lines that weren't not top tier talent. So we had to find ways around that, too. So that part of it was really a good learning experience. He's saying for getting this Titans job because the offensive line sucks. Uh, yep. For me, it was learning how to manage the defenses we had to play against when we had less talent up front than the defensive fronts we were playing against. So how do we scheme around that? That's probably been the most important thing I've learned is how to manage that part of the offense. He's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, the And what I loved – too about that is his very real admission that listen I get Joe Burrow is special I get Jamar Chase is, is special and that's part of the reason we were able to have some success with what we did Will Levis is not Joe Burrow yet maybe he turns into him but he's not right and it's it's refreshing to hear the head coach, point out that he realizes how much they were able to do in Cincinnati because of the tools they had. Yes. So I thought that was a really interesting part, like you, like you just said. I think maybe that's the most interesting part, is he had to kind of check himself. Mm -hmm. And he's telling you, I had to check myself because mm -hmm. they're cutting up tape to show the offensive players what this offense is going to be. Right, and he yeah. as he's watching the tape, he's he's got to check himself a little bit, and think. Look, he also said we can do this. Like this is quarterback applicable, but I got to check myself and say, "Hey, man, that was Joe Burrow's pretty good." Right. Oh, and, and Jamar Chase, and he said, "God, Jamar is really good." Yeah. <laughs> Six one five seven three seven one zero four five at three HL one zero four five. Tony the stud. Tony, what up? What's going on? Yo. I'm just sitting out here listening to y'all uh, cut up about these hot dogs and choking. I'm out here eating the McDonald's. Sorry. Um, hey, do y'all think that they, uh, when they do the hot dog eating championship, that they have safety meetings about that? A hundred percent. Oh, yeah. And they're signing waivers and they've got medical personnel. Those whole. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. I wonder, I wonder, like, what the actual percentage is of, like, how many times Joey's actually been choking on hot dogs but just kept shoveling them down. I, I don't know. <laughs> that was, honestly, that was, uh, <laughs> That was one at Joey Chestnut. That was one of the um, highlights of our um, our Zoom broadcasting during COVID. Was we had we Joey had Chestnut, on. Joey Chestnut on. We we y'all should do a uh, y'all should have your own hot dog eating contest between no. between you, you Slay and uh, uh, Ramon and Brent. <laughs> <laughs> Negative, <laughs> dude. Oh, and one more thing, man. Hey, go ball. There you go. I'll be the judge of that uh, eating contest. Hot dog eating, eating contest. Those. We did do a, a an eating contest at Na at Nashville at the Midtown location, OG. Um, and I can't remember what the contest was even. It might have been hot chicken. All I know is it was before my time. It was pre-you. It was pre-you. Pre-dawn. <laughs> PM dawn. Um, oh, wow. 
So there's a show called ESPN Bet Live, and mm-hmm. there's a host uh, of that show named Joe. His best bet today is Tennessee minus the three and a half. So he's going to take that inflated number. And he feels good about it. Do you feel that good about Tennessee? I do now. <laughs> you don't even know, you don't even know if good. Joe's right all the time. I do. I watch the show all the time. I, in fact, I DVR it, so I was going to watch it later. But, um, yeah, Joe does a good job. I'm glad I got it at two and a half. Uh, two and a half. Let me just say that. But now I'm looking at it. Yes, Babs. It's a lot easier to do this when they're when Slay's here. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five at the HL one zero four five. If you want in, uh, uh, you can uh, you can do it on the Evan and Bank chat, uh, YouTube, Facebook Live, and Twitch. Twitch, please. Uh, Tyler says, if you're scared, go to church. Vol's going to roll tonight. <laughs> David, trade finally official for Sneed. Yep. We talked about that. Um, for anybody that was worrying, there was no need to worry. RJ in Phoenix, if Tennessee loses, get a new coach. I, was was this last win enough to, to take the heat off of Rick? Why is there heat on a guy that won the SEC regular season championship? <laughs> like, I I because don't, I don't understand this. Because his teams do not perform in postseason tournaments. Right. I understand that. But you fire a guy that just won the conference? There's no way Tennessee would fire him. Now, from what I hear, if they make a long enough run, he may walk away and he be might, done. He might be done. Yeah. How old is he? He's up he's up there. Oh, well, he had lost I mean, there was all the talk that he had kind of lost the passion for coaching before he got to Tennessee. Tennessee re-energized him. That, right. that is a definite thing um, from what I understand. Um, you can't fire. Like, if you're an AD, do you fire him? No, absolutely not. Okay, so you're just no, asking the question. No, I'm I'm saying, though. He's that 69, by the way. 69. The heat is on. I, that's what I was asking. Is the heat... Less if, because they were actually able to win that last game. If they lose, yes. Listen, I mean, fans are fanatics, right? Like, mm-hmm. fan is short for fanatic. So, if they lose, it, it'll be loud. That was the best team Tennessee's ever had. They couldn't get out of the Sweet 16, all these things. Well, Creighton's right. pretty good, too. You know what I mean? Like, um, but, yeah, it, it would be loud. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't think it would be justified, necessarily. I mean, I get it, though. I mean, I understand the frustration. I mean, I'm a Tennessee fan. I went there. Yeah. My name's on a building up there. Not my name, my great grandfather's name. Um, so I get the frustration of the tournament thing for sure. I mean, the fact that Tennessee, with its resources, has been to the Elite Eight once and never been to the Final Four blows my mind. Yeah. That blows my mind. So, yeah, I, I understand it. But in terms of firing him, you, you don't fire him. I mean, they won the SEC. What did what did Slay keep saying? Well, I mean, what does Slay keep saying about uh, Stack? Stackhouse? You don't fire a guy that was coach of the year last year. Well, they did. Well, they did. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it was because he was co-coach of the year. I saw I saw uh, MB, the new coach, making his rounds around campus, going to visit all the frat houses. Which is exactly what Stackhouse did. It's like <laughs> literally the same tour. <laughs> Remember, Stack was like playing basketball at frat houses when yeah. he got the job. Probably still dominating. Yeah, I'm anxious to get him on, Byington. I'm anxious to get him on and kind of check him out. When what, are we getting him on? Uh, I've been told that when he has availability and starts doing media, he will be on with us. Wow, that's you got sold something. Normally do. <laughs> when he does media availability, you'll get him. When okay. is he doing media availability? That would be the next question. Has he? He did his little presser, right? He, his little, his little baby presser. Yeah. They he did his presser memorial. today. Yes. What? I said they had it in memorial. It wasn't a little baby presser. No, it you wasn't. I was I just mean. kidding. I just like it when Slay <laughs> says that. So sometimes I just channel Slay. Are we going to talk to him when he when we come back? There's no telling. He has not replied to anything I have sent. <laughs> I'll so it them. may be nap time. Yeah, that's what happens. I tell Dawn sometimes, like, if he doesn't answer me, I'm like, hey, Babs, 
Can you check on Slay? He's not in nap time yet. He might be. All right. Uh, well, we might check in with Slay from Detroit next. 3 hl one zero four five. This <laughs> All right, you guys, uh, maybe you're new to Middle Tennessee. Maybe you don't know how the weather goes around here, but come spring, it is storm season in Middle Tennessee, and you don't want to be left out without power. Call Cove Generators and let them help you. They've got portable generators if you know a storm's coming and maybe you just want to be prepared in that way, or uh, they can put a permanent generator on in your home. Cove Generators is your premier Generac home standby generator dealer. And uh, now's a great time to go ahead and get that done. Get an estimate on your Generac home standby generator from Cove Generators. When your power goes off the grid, your home is protected. And the beautiful thing about these generators nowadays The Generac Home Standby Generators are seamlessly integrated into your home. They're super quiet. Uh, And if you do it with Cove Generators, this is all they do, generators. And so they take care of you. They are with you for the duration of the ownership of your generator. And they make sure that when storms are on the horizon, your generator is good to go and ready to make sure that you never lose power again. Contact Cove Generators, 931-559-3311, or just go online. Visit them at covegenerators.com and stay connected through it all. Wouldn't you like for solid ground to be standing on? Yeah. You know, kids running around out back, not tripping over cracked pavements and things of that nature. Yeah, I'm talking about right there at your home when the barbecues are starting to fire up. You know, the weather's broken and you're like, I want to show out today. I'm going to invite some people over. Don't you want to have them people be comfortable? Yeah, stepping on decorative concrete, stamp concrete. Don't you want the renovations to be done correctly in the backyard? Millican Court brings all of this to you. And more because they're experts in concrete, asphalt grading, and drainage services. You won't go wrong, and I can guarantee you that. No need in waiting on the weather to break. They'll get started right now. All you got to do is give them a shout. How would you do that? Well, you pick up the phone. Dial 615-238-5909. Going to set it up. And when you get that call back within 24 hours, you know your project will typically be started in about a four-week window from that first call. Millican Corp, they always bring it to you live and direct. Not your fault. You choose the wrong ass fault. Yes, choose MillicanCorp.com.
Praying for Slay? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're praying that he's not in jail yet. <laughs> MC Hammer. Uh, have uh, any of y'all heard from him? I didn't text him. Uh, no. Uh, no. I just texted him, so I don't know. Okay. Well, Slay checked in earlier, and the party was already going. He was at a UT tailgate, and he was about to do a – he said that Alan Houston was there, Tony White was there, the wizard, man. Tony White was, oh, my gosh, so much fun as a kid to watch play. Um, that Josiah Jordan James's dad was there. And that they were about to do a Q- – and then uh, Dante Plowman, the ch- uh, chancellor, rolled up while he was on the phone with us. And so he was about to lead a uh, Q&A, and Chris-, and Chris Lowe was there and going to take the mic and ask Slay questions, and I <laughs> – there's no telling. There's no telling. But Don was like, Slay – somebody asked, and I asked him, somebody asked on YouTube, is Slay fried? And <laughs> Slay was like, what? Hell yeah! <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Don's like, Slay, you've got more than four hours until game time. He's like, yeah. yeah. Oh, that gives me anxiety, too. Someone said I was like mama bearing him. I'm like, yeah. There ain't no way he's going to make it to the game. Actually, you know, he'll make it. It is, it is funny being She's around be y'all. Fried. Y'all kind of mom and dad each other. It's funny. Because <laughs> when we were in Vegas, like, I mean, I wasn't really interested in going out, out, you know, like I'm too old for that crap. And, <laughs> and, and I'm not a big casino guy, like, but I did enjoy like watching y'all do it, but we go back to the hotel and, you, and you're like, we're standing there talking like, okay, we're saying good night. And it's only like nine o'clock or something. That was early. And like, you were, there is literally a casino right there. You were, and you said that and you're like, <laughs> and Slay looked at you and he put his hands on your shoulders and he said, listen, lady. <laughs> you're going to your room <laughs> and you're going to watch TV or something. <laughs> you're not going out by yourself in Vegas. <laughs> so I don't even know what you did. Did you go to your room? Yeah. <laughs> I got cut. You know why? It is because Mr. Babs was like, hey, watch Dawn. Yeah. Make sure she's taken care of. We did. Blah, we did blah, get blah. Read, and the, I'm like, read the riot act. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I, I, my gambling got cut off. But you never leave a man behind. That is true. So now you are concerned about him because we're not with him. I know. We there got Will, no we got Will from the Ville taking care of him. He hasn't responded my, to my text. So he might be. I did retweet um, Chris Harris from WSMV Sports is there covering the Vols. And he put out a picture of on stage Dondi Plowman, <laughs> Alan Houston, Tony White, and Ron Slay all on stage together. What a great. That's outstanding. So uh, I, he might still be doing his Q&A session there. We'll give him that. All right. I, let's go to Big O real quick. Got about 30 seconds. Big O, what's up? I'll go quick. I want to talk about Barnes. I yep. just don't think he's getting the credit he deserves. How many coaches can say they've been to the Sweet 16 back-to-back the last two years? Last year, he beat Duke. He's a trainer of men on and off the court. Look at what Calipari's done. And even look who Pearl got beat by this year. I mean, Yale, give me a break. (laughs) This man short. He's doing better than what y'all giving him credit for. He's my coach. All I'll right. take him every right. day, any day. Thanks. Right. Thank Good you, stuff, o. Appreciate Big it. O. Good luck. There, there's Slay on the way out. Slay, what's up? What up, baby? It's going down, man. I'm talking about we pride beyond Nezza right now. I don't know how I'm going to stand up at the game. Do I just you, want everybody to know that. Do you want to get really excited real quick? ESPN Bet Live was on. Joe Fortenberry's bet of the day yeah. is Tennessee minus three and a half. Man, I told you Tennessee by seven. All right. Let's go. And we up here, too. You got I'll 10 seconds, Slay. Hey, 10 seconds, and we're out. Stay. <laughs> there he goes. All right. It's a double A tournament action next. Love y'all. Have a great weekend. See ya. Good night. God bless. Wouldn't want to be you.